Hey guys, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and turn on the notifications if you want to see more videos and walkthroughs from the EHG community. Thank you very much. Alright, so, I already, I already set the thing to record. So, for those who are already in here, we already got a couple of people here. Anim anime protagonists, we got Lone Wolf here. Uh, we got Revolution just popped in. And once again, I want to say thank you guys for allowing me to have this platform. Thank you, Papa Drack. Thank you, Drack, my, my mans. I appreciate you very much for that. And I appreciate you, you guys. Time, you time. Yeah, I appreciate you guys for popping in always. And, you know, always like coming in, you know, showing some support to EHG, being like helping out with EHG with the podcast. I appreciate that very much. And um, as I said, like this is another EHG podcast. And this is with the special guests. We have a couple of people from the Immortals Discord. I will put a link to the Discord in my in my description, so you can go ahead and join in. You can definitely join in, chat with a bunch of amazing people that I've known for a while. Um, you can definitely go ahead and see the amazing streams, the podcasts that they have, and also show some support to them. And especially, you know, um, you can also show some support to some of the streamers like like Papa Drac. I'll put his link to his Twitch in there as well. And you guys make sure to show your support to all of them and show your support to everybody here. Um, once again, as I said, thank you guys very much for popping in. So, so it's 2022 has been an interesting year for the games. Very interesting year. We had like a whole bunch of like, you know, the Gamescom um, conference, Nintendo Direct, some, and then especially a whole bunch of different conferences with brand new games that are coming out. So... Uh, you have like things like you know high on life we have um the the Callisto protocol that will be coming out in the Dece December um second um there was also um in one of the anime expos the reveal of Gundam Evolution there's Overwatch 2 um there was like I would think there was a lot more scenes for like other games such as for high on life you know for from the guys who made Rick and Morty um excuse me uh, I think we got a little bit more like viewing of God of War um, at Ragnarok. We've got like a whole lineup of games that are coming out. And I just want to know like, like for me, like I'm very, very excited for this lineup. Right, right, Drag? Like, you, please tell me you look at this lineup, but you can't say you're not excited. Oh, no. I noticed when I was, when we was watching E3, not even this year. But uh, last year, seeing all the video game, like from the video game awards and the other awards that popped out, I noticed that like majority of the games ha that are good have been like they was always slated. And this happened last year. They were always slated like at the end of the year, like September, it starts to build up. And then like October to December, you just get game after game after game. And I, it's like, so I am not surprised with the lineup, even though some of those games have been pushed back, like for Spoken got pushed back. Um, and then what's the name? The day before got pushed back. However, we still got God of War. We still got Modern Warfare 2. We still got a couple of other gems that's, you know, in the rising. And, and not only if then, man, I think Hogwarts Legacy is still talking about trying to come out this year. Mm. So, like, this end of the year looks like it's pretty good. What's the name? It's going to be pretty good. Hopefully, uh, all these um, highly anticipated games don't, you know, they don't be one of those games where you're like, yo, I was extremely hyped. And now I'm like, eh. Like one of those uh, over, is that overrated games or overhyped games. Hopefully, it lives up to its hype and we play them for a while because honestly the only game that we had this year was literally elden ring <laughs> elden yeah. ring with maybe uh respect um i want to say it's sad to say disney's dreamlight <laughs> yeah. and um it was another game that i had on the list that I said that like these are the only games i will that i could see get uh game of the year if god of war doesn't come out because there just wasn't a lot of great like a lot of games that we thought like seafood was okay horizon to you know people um it's man it, it's not bad but it's no it's not overly talked about about or like how elden ring has been even to this day um how elden ring's been talked about 
Um, mm. It just really hasn't been a lot of games this, this year, honestly. So seeing God of War and a couple of these gems coming out at the end of the year kind of made, made me feel that, okay, maybe this year, 2022, when it comes to gaming, wasn't a total buzzkill, total flop. Oh, okay so like like you're just like it's like you have you have like a like you're very excited but someone that like, you're taking like caution for it i like, think that that's why i feel like like you're taking like caution for like some of the games yeah. that are coming out for it okay i, ca- I know god of war is yeah. gonna be great like that's uh without a doubt right like that game is so big to the point where and like highly anticipated like this game is already written down as game of the year and it's not even out yet and that's how you know how great of a game and how what's the name how much respect people have for santa monica studios that's really respectful that they did with uh the last god of war was it god of war 4 and like that game literally was going next like the only game that was competition to it was red dead at the time and not a lot of people didn't think it was gonna get game of the year but it did and this well was this well deserved for because that game really was during that time i gave that like a nine nine point five like there really wasn't a there really wasn't a thing that made me go about the game that made me go down it shouldn't got like it was literally better than sex if it was one of my movie ratings it would have been the top rating better than sex because there's nothing i could really say only thing that was a against it at the time was there was no new game plus so you just like beat the game you're like all right that's cool but once mm-hmm. they added new game plus say you no know, that uh, made the graphics you know tweet the graphic for ps5 and series x the game was pretty damn perfect just like there was really there's not really anything i could think of like it didn't really need dlc it was literally a complete game Mm. and that's what i miss about gaming nowadays is that we don't have complete games like we have games that will come out and it'd be like a third or fourth of the game and the dlc one two and three be like the complete that's when you get the complete game and you already spent past sixty dollars where with this game you spent sixty dollars and got what you paid for and that's why i have a lot of respect for santa monica no fear for it when god of war ragnarok every trailer every commercial i see makes me just want to just tweet them and say just drop the damn game already like i'm i'm ready to play it's that much in hype that i have for that game now for um some other games that's coming out with it like my warfare 2 i played the beta it was it wasn't bad uh there were some things i wish they fixed before launch like the uh when you slide it's t- like the slide delay i hope they fix that because it takes way too long to get up once you slide on that game the distance i have an issue with that makes sense i'm tired of you slide 20 feet on the ground like you <laughs> on a slip and slide which it made sense yeah. given it was like uh infinite warfare advanced warfare you had tech so i would think with that type of tech you could but with modern warfare it, when you're literally just a, a human with no robotic enhancements i don't think you should be sliding like 20 feet and yeah. then um the jump it the uh, and the jump height and delay is not bad i think that um it took a while to get used to it because i'm so used to the other call of duties but um it's definitely i feel like it's good and it makes the game all around tactical i just think that one of the biggest issues they have right now is they need to fix the um hacking and the cheating because it's very prevalent compared to uh past call of duty games where you just like bro dang this dude look <laughs> this dude really shot me through the wall or this dude the way he's moving is like npcs from um titanfall how yeah. they were just was walking all of a sudden they turn around and they headshot you you're just like okay but so once they fix those issues in that area when it comes to multiplayer i think my warfare 2 would be good um the story i really didn't see much of the story so um i might peep it once it drops but i think like as when multiplayer wise if they just fix those things be great um 
and then when it comes to the story hopefully the story is as great as the original because the original is one of my favorite call of duty game stories mm-hmm. next to i want to say my warfare part one the original even in three like the whole trilogy is my favorite and then advanced warfare i did like its story i liked world of war story um and then i want to say there was another story call of duty ghost wasn't a bad story i think uh the ending could have been better but uh, all in all the ghost story was pretty good oh okay well i understand that reasoning um but one quick question i'm gonna ask you and i'm gonna ask some of the people that join in by the way arch what's up man how you doing welcome in um with the lineup of the games which one are you most excited so um, the, we're gonna go ahead and like you know start off in the role you know me and then we're gonna go to you and then to whoever is in the audience and everything we're gonna hear everybody's perspective on it um for me um i think really the high on life game i'm very excited for um i think it's because for like some like type of comedic relief like that i think we need that within a game i think i personally I haven't seen that in a while and the guys who did like the voice of rick and morty and who did like you know anything of rick and morty of that project have something to do with that game and i like the idea that you know that comedic type of relief comes in with it and you know like with that instead of just like that being like a regular first person shooter game instead of just like being like sometimes always serious uh this this one actually brings like either you know major amounts of laughter to the actual player so i can't wait for that one but um wh- which one are you you know mo- most excited for i would say outside of god of war um how life does look interesting i uh, you could definitely tell it was a Rick and Morty game uh, by just how the the world itself and then how their gun, how everybody just, you know, interacted with each other. But uh, with that being said, it does look pretty interesting and look like it would be a lot of jokes and laughs. Something to, uh, something to probably, you know, just enjoy. For even if it's a one you playing it like once or twice, it seems like definitely a uh, it will be a fun, fun experience to have. Yeah, I, and, um, yeah. I would say um, going to the rest of the line of I already talked about Call of Duty and then uh, <laughs> looping back to God of War. Um, I want to say that what um uh, what else for that's coming out later this year? um there is um there is the new on fire emblem mirage there is um not mirage it gives me a uh, fire emblem and I, I completely forgot the name of it it's a brand new fire emblem for it i know um we do have breath of the wild another um excuse me zelda um i believe tears of the kingdom i believe that's what it's okay. called i believe that's the brand new um look for it we still got the Callisto protocol which is coming out in december 2nd Oh, okay. Yeah, we have many different games that are coming out. Of course, we got the God of War, and then we found we actually finally got information on Dead Island too. So there was that. I'm hyped for Dead Island too. I've been I've been waiting for Dead Island two ever for since. Years. Uh, Rick, like, yeah, I beat I beat part one only once. Fortunately, I, I was able to beat it on hard mode because my my copy was extremely glitchy. Um, and I beat Riptide <clears throat> a couple of times, and mm-hmm. I I will say where some people enjoy probably Riptide more. I was I'm on the spectrum that kind of enjoyed part one in some cases more, at least at the part of the bad guy. If you play his part of the story, then I would say I enjoy part one more. But if you play like the regular survivor, I will say Riptide just uh story wise was a lot better i feel like they learned a lesson uh from uh what part one with it yeah that- but what outside of that too oh man i can't wait for part two to drop and then callisto protocol mm. oh the reason why i can't wait for callisto protocol is because i'm a big <laughs> i'm a big death space man like i'm a big horror fanatic if you don't know me I play a lot of fighting games, but um, and I'll play a lot of horror games whenever they drop. Or I try to been trying to get a bunch of horror games. Like I just beat Madison about a week ago, and mm. 
I'm looking for the next uh, horror game because I think what was the uh, next one? The Devil in Me, the Dark Andrology. Mm-hmm. I'll, I don't know if that's going to be good or not. We'll see. I'm waiting for October, the end of October, because that's when the Outlast Trials beta drops. So I can't wait to play that. And it's a couple of other horror games that's uh, in the making, but definitely Callista Protocol. It makes me one reap. It's kind of like Cyberpunk Edge Runners made you want to play Cyberpunk. Callista Protocol makes me want to replay Dead Space before it drops. Like, it's just, like it. I love the ambience that it has, along with uh, the combat that's a little bit more fluid than Dead Space, <clears throat> at least Dead Space One and Two. And mm. pretty much the enemies definitely give me Dead Space vibes. The way that you have to shoot their limbs off in order to uh, kill them, that you can't just shoot them in the head. But these ones apparently evolve. If you shoot their head off or the legs, and you don't quickly kill them. They become stronger rather than how with Dead Space, you just shoot. No, they just keep trying to kill you. No, yeah. jump on you. But these ones evolve, and that's what makes it a little bit more, a little bit more challenging and scary at the same time. Yeah, and that, I, yeah. I just can't wait for it to drop in. I believe my girl Karen Fukuhara is in that game. So yeah, I if, from the boy. If you don't know her, she's Kimiko from The Boys. So that's another reason. Now I'm a little bit hyped for the game. Oh, okay. That's that sounds awesome. Like you know, I with with that, like I'm just I'm very skeptical about the Kalista Protocol because I not not in a bad way, but in a good way because I want to see how that would go. Like, I want to see if it has like any if it's just a thing on its own or it has a tie tie in because it looks like it has like somewhat of a tie into Dead Space, but like I I probably does it. It's probably on its own. Um, I think wait. it's uh it's its own property. Uh because uh but now the people who worked on dead space did do it so that's where the tie in but as in far as the story i think it's going to be its own thing because mm-hmm. they still fighting with ea just to get just to try to do a dead space 4. yeah I, I, yeah i guess that's why they're doing the remake but i guess at the moment until they actually get that but um i want to try to get lone wolf in here lone wolf if you want you can go ahead and um you can pop in here you know, I just want to know which game you're excited for to come out. Um, you know, by all means, just go ahead and raise your hand for that, and then we'll just pop you in, and then we can we can hear like your part of it. Or oh, and then we'll go to Arch right now, and want to see how um like if you guys want to go ahead and just like you know give us your answer. It could be Lone Wolf. It could be Arch. Oh, there you go, Arch. Hmm. Really enough, uh, it's kind of slept on, but Overwatch too. Yep. Yep. And, oh, uh, you're both in here. Awesomeness. Yeah. yeah I, I'm. I understand that. Like, I, that. That's what on one of the um, topics are for today. Also, so we can bring that up. Um. Yeah. I'm. I'm excited for that because I'm an Overwatch fan myself. I played it competitively, so I would love to go ahead and wait for that. But. But. Uh, but you know that feeling just isn't gonna come back as like the first game when it came out yeah yeah it's it's completely different now like for me i'm just like it's like i'm waiting for the game but then i'm cautious to go inside of it like you know the game is gonna be hella toxic but, yeah but um what about you long you what, what you got for us your um mic is muted by the way i know i was just trying to figure out how to put it into speaker um okay. Mostly, I'm really excited for just for this year's just God of War and Callisto. Oh, okay. So, what 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 got you very excited for those games? Like, what 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 caught your attention? Is it just because like are you a big God of War fan, or or like the horror aspect of Callisto? Like, what 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 would usually get your get your uh, mainly because yes, I'm a God of War fan and I like the story a lot from the last one. So, I want to see where this picks up, where it leaves off. Mm-hmm. And for Callisto, it pretty much like you know, I haven't been, I haven't played like a horror game in a, in a bit, so I'm actually excited to see like how this horror game plays. Okay, all right. So I guess we're all very excited for 2023. You know, late 2022 video games coming out, especially we got that Gotham Knights coming out. I can't wait for that. But uh, that's gonna be trash. Uh, I. Black 
I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know how I feel about that, honestly. I just gotta, I gotta see how it is. The gameplay looks good, I just gotta see where it goes with this, but... I, I'll, I'll try to keep my hopes up for it, but uh, from what I've seen so far, from the trailers, the Red Hood, and the storyline, uh, it's gonna be have to be hard. It's gonna have to come back hard. Yeah. I, I didn't like the Red Hood look or the Red Hood and the storyline. It's just like, eh. I think I think that should have been like a lot more. You should have been a lot more hardcore on that. But I think really when it comes to Gotham Knights, why I, I was at first, and I was one of. The, <clears throat> don't get me wrong, I was one of the people that was tight for it. But my problem, the way the game was, is the idea of only making it two-player co-op, where that game would have been very good four if player. it was four-player. Like I think that is one of those games that should have been four player and you had all like you I play Red Hood or Arch plays Red Hood. I play like Dick Grace and Nightwing. Um you play uh, <clears throat> Tim Drake, Zet plays Batgirl, and we just go through the story and then when you pop out, it just be three of us and then two of us. But we still all come together and it would have made the gameplay a lot more it would have been DC's way of showing Square Enix's Avengers how to actually do the type of game that they was trying to do. Yeah. And they fumbled the bag on that one. I honestly think they should have been four player with better connect, no, with showing better connectivity, abilities, and made the gameplay a little bit fluid because it feels like a, like a, lean, not linear, but a stiff Arkham Asylum or Arkham City. Mm. Man, it, like it's not as fluid as those the um, that series, especially Arkham Knight. Um, so I feel like that if they would have did all of that, the game would have been not slept on, and people would have been talking about it more. But with that, with that respect, it's just I'm I'm gonna just wait till it drops, and when it drops, I may peep it. And like if it gets good enough, what's the name? Um, Reviews. Good and people start talking good about it. You guys playing like yo drag check it. You want to check it out? Uh, I'll probably check it out. Outside of that, I'm I'm not really excited for it myself. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, what about you, Lone? Lone? Is that it? Oh, oh, what happened? Sorry. Uh, no, like, uh, but, like we were just talking about um Gotham Knights. Do you um are you excited for it? Are you is there some concerns? Like, what do, you, what do you got for us? Honestly, can't say much about it since I have not no interest in playing it as of now. But I'll wait till it comes out and if I hear good things about it, then maybe I'll play it. But until then, uh, I'm like sticking out with this one. Okay. All right. And that's understandable. That's a, that's a good point. That's a good point. And I like that. Um, I like that um, opinion on that. All right. Um. Okay, so we're gonna go move on to um, a different topic right now, and um, this is a very important topic, especially for me, because um, I think this is this is a very important thing when it comes to video games, and that's character customization. Um, we're talking about like you know like straight up palettes, uh, skins. Uh, we're talking about things like you know in regards to like you know hair design, you know skin color, you know freaking size of bodies, whatever you want to go ahead and make your character on. Like in, in from any type of games, like um, like for instance, like like give me an example of one of your favorite types of character customizations. Like for me, it would be like something of like Dynasty Warriors. Like I, like I'm a big Dynasty Warriors Empires fan, and I like the character customizations, and you know especially how you could create your own character and and try to like you know build your own empire with it but then at one point it, like it lowers like the character customization constantly left and right which i personally i personally think like for games like that there should be a lot of options for character customization but otherwise i do like those type of games like dynasty warriors for character customization so we're gonna um start off with loan so loan how do you um what's your favorite type of um game with character customization uh, that's the thing though, like, do you mean like, like create, how, do, how you create your own character or like, 
food, mop or anything. Like whether it's creating your own character or customizing like you know the the main character of a game, anything anything of that sort. Uh, I would say like every time when you level up, you could choose to like which stat you want to level up. So it like pretty much gives you like a leeway of like how you want to make your build for that character. So if you want to make it like a strength only or a like magic only. Okay, okay. So like, um, which game like do you like <laughs> that you play that is like in that area? Like, is it mostly like MMO based or? Like I would say like Dark Souls. Or any Shimigami Tensei games, if anybody ever played them. Mm. Okay. Okay, no, that's a good choice for it. Yeah, you, 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 I'm sorry, you were saying? Oh, I was uh, listening to you. Oh, okay, no, but yeah, that's a, that's a good choice. Dark Souls ha has a very great, um, like, I would say a great ca character customization for that. Um, what about you, Arch? What is like your favorite like game with character customization, and why do you like that character customization for it? I know this is gonna be uh, what do you call it? a bit of a debate here, but weirdly enough, Cyberpunk. I think it had one of the greatest custom uh, customization bases when it first came out. I agree. Uh, that a lot of people didn't give it a lot of uh, rep it deserved because the game was so poorly taken when it first came out. I just wish it came, especially when it comes to clothing wise, because I don't know if you've played recently, but now even even though you have basic armor that you can, with that has different stats and everything else like that, you can even go back into your base and make your own outfit just for looks with a lot of different clothes and you can buy clothes in the game too that have all different looks. Yeah. Um, so for customization and looks, Cyberpunk. Um, now for stat wise, mm -hmm. I think Fallout, um, because Fallout had a lot of different stats you can put in, and with every single game, I know it's overused and people are so bored of it now, but you gotta remember, you got I love putting, as an RPG player constantly, I love putting my different, like, stats and leveling them up and as I go, and becoming the best in the game I ever, you know? Yeah, I understand that, especially, um... I, I, I do I do know where you come from with cyberpunk because I'm true honesty I, I make my female V look sexy as hell so so there's that and then like especially with Fallout especially I think it's like Bethesda games like Fallout and um also um I would say like Elder Scrolls that actually have that amazing um that character customization that I like the most I do hope and wish that one day they do combine that and I know this is gonna sound a bit nerdy for me but make a game like Overlord. Uh, the anime mm. and where you can build where you can get the like the whole guild you can make your own guild and characters exactly how you want in and role play in such a way or whatever you want you know yeah i understand that like well they'll say it's nerdy because i think we're all nerdy here no worry we're gamers here we're good so trust me we all have our nerdy moments so it's all good my friend um but yeah i completely understand that um drac now it's your turn so what is your favorite custom character customization and in what game? Um, I'm with uh, Arch when it comes to <clears throat> how he's talking about Fallout. Because I would say Fallout definitely was one of the ones I was going to say because it goes with how you, how well you can create your, make your character look from as far as their nose, your eyes. You know, you can get it really in detail. And I would say another game that's with Fallout in that respect, I, like the Dragon Age games or like that, mm. but they get, you know, Mass Effect. Mm. A lot of people sleep on the fact that how Mass Effect for uh, for a while until your uh, other games, like I said, like uh, Fallout, Dragon Age, hell, even the, uh, what's the name series? The, uh, the uh, Dark Souls, uh, Elden, uh, Dark Souls and your Elden Ring series, how in depth the character develop, character creation really is, and um, when it comes to just making your character look a certain way and everything, I feel like Cyberpunk at first didn't have that. Like, on, like one thing I would disagree with Arch on that one is, yeah, you can make your. Now it's probably fixed now, but when it first came out. Um, it had that issue that a lot of games like from your 
even your jump force or other anime based character co customization games were where you couldn't really make a minority character or look like a black and hispanic slash latino character where mm. mo all your characters no matter what you do look either they just look white with a tan <laughs> and mm. i think that's where i had to, and i made a joke about that when i was streaming cyberpunk i was like dog my dude it's like it's like they was no my dude did not look black and i felt like when he's like even with uh elder school I me mean, elden ring that was uh you is like for the most part you could make a character look like like he's actually like okay i could he could pass for that mm. and uh mass effect you could but it's just cyberpunk really not really it was weird but i'm pretty sure they fixed it now i haven't played cyberpunk since the well i played cyberpunk uh, a couple of months as i is about uh three months ago or four months ago i just didn't play the customization part of the game i just was like yo let me just play i only got like five or six hours with this free trial <laughs> let me just play the story real quick and just to see if you know the game is runs better and it definitely runs better it's definitely playable yeah um, i'm definitely going to uh, especially watching the anime definitely going to buy it again rebuy it and then uh beat it but um yeah it's just like certain like when it comes to just character looks i'll say that the best would be like your mass effect your um your mass effect your elder scrolls series dynasty warriors is a good one but um that has kind of the same thing with cyberpunk where um it was it's kind of hard to make a minority <laughs> but um those do have some pretty good ones the least the really least character customizations would be like your i think it's called uh brink mm. and then even your anime custom and your characterizations like your jump force and your what was the uh one that came out uh dragon ball xenoverse yeah they could have do a little bit a lot better with their custom uh when it comes to making your the way your character looks like now when it comes to stats wise when it comes to like you know i'll say fallout definitely is one of those where it comes to your armor look has this i know assassin's creed try to jump on it mm -hmm. and don't get me wrong uh wrong it's not bad for uh bad but i think one the, as i guess a start well as far because i only played origins so i don't know how about Hollow and all no more but what i will say when it comes to like your armor doing having this and this uh these perks and everything else i'll definitely say fallout is one of the best ones on that i um, think the dragon age was like that too along with uh fable mm -hmm. it's been a while since i played fable so i can't really say uh but i will say mass effect and elder the elder scroll series definitely i like the way how this armor is is this and this armor that but i think fallout took it a especially four took it a whole nother level where each piece like the shoulder pads uh, have could be like legendary and that gives you like a hundred uh it's like a, like a hundred to your damage or something like that and like you can uh <laughs> Uh, I, like the minute you shoot at somebody the stranger pops out and kills the person for you and some crazy stat like that and I feel like it does you know RPG wise uh, makes makes you want to pick mix and mash and see which piece you know goes with you you know goes with that to fit your play style I don't second best one I'll definitely say outside of fallout and elder scrolls is not a lot of people talked about but the division mm. even though there was some balancing issues there was at one point i think it was like patch 1.3 in part one where legit everything was exquisite but they fucked it up in 1.4 where uh you, you know you had like these shoulder these knee pads this backpack and if you had like four of like path of the nomad it brings you back to life and striker gave you plus 35 damage to your smgs and all and uh or it, it takes no you do a sh like it's really good damage to so uh to elites like uh bosses and stuff and mm -hmm. i feel like division definitely 
had a really good system when it comes to uh, your armor on no the stats the stat building and you know making your character the way that your playstyle is oh, okay then those are really good choices especially the ones that you were talking about especially like the divisions the division had amazing good choices on that and elder ring does have amazing great choices on that but with that do you feel like there are games that need to have more character customization like do you feel like that some games that even that don't have that choice need to have more character customization? Like, is that like, like you, you guys could chime in anytime on this. It's like, I feel like some games that some games, especially some MMOs or some games that are like, you know, with major amounts of character customization should have way more. Um, and that's like, you know, like for instance, for my opinion, the uh, Destiny 2 instead of having to use things like shaders i think there should be a palette for, for something like that um but that, that that's just personally me um do you guys feel like that more games should have like a palette or 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 any other options i think when, especially with destiny 2 a lot of people that's one of people's biggest complaints um when it comes to like the cosmetics <laughs> that it shouldn't be shader based i'm glad they got rid of it where you have to have like five shaders and if you use this one to try to change a color you have to somehow re-get that shader or it was lost forever i'm glad they, re they got rid of that aspect but i feel like when it comes to destiny at a game that like once you beat the game the dlc story and everything that you're just trying to make your character look good because it's all about Honestly, that's what Destiny is, is really about the fashion. That instead of it being shader, it should be like palette, where not even just palette, like uh, it should be and like in depth, like how Dragon Age, where in Dragon Age, you could be like, yo, I can make this look like a certain color and this look like a certain color, which I think that's palette based, um, where um, you pick and choose what color scheme that you want rather than it say, yo, um you red and gold you hope you get a red and gold shader so you can rock red gold and black and then when you get red gold and black it's not in the scheme that you want your character to look like and i think if it was more you get to choose that that the cosmetic like the sh uh cosmetic part of destiny would be really good it would actually been really really good because you will be able to not look like every almost every person in destiny you can have your own like okay we got the same like essentially the same drip but i have a different color scheme mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then um when it comes to like more customerization to your character it just depends on the game honestly like um i would say definitely there's some games that you kind of like wow i wish i could actually just make my own character or just be my own person or i wish i could you know make this character look a certain way rather than his basic drip mm -hmm. uh, drip or the set of the drip that they give me let me add on to it let me do some nba 2k my career to my character <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh and give him the type of drip that i want but um honestly it just like i said it just depends on the game whatever what game that you because some games require it some games don't require it or as much uh much so it i feel like that one's more of in a gray area than a black and white area okay all right i understand that point from the point of view i completely understand that like i feel like there's a lot of places that a lot of games that need that especially like you know like the my, create a character or my or like my my career type stuff like like besides just regular like sports games like i believe that something like they need something similar to that um so arch what about you do you um like mm -hmm. like so the question is is that do you feel as if that there should be more more options for character customization on games that have it or, or there's like a game that you want to have character customization what would you what would you like to see i wouldn't mind any more customization like, i think it's great in games it uh really that's what I'm looking for. It basically lets people make their own characters, like however they want to. It's nice. It's a great way to separate people. 
Okay, I, I agree with that, especially, like, for me, I feel like that's, um, there is, um, there should be a lot of choices in regards to, to that when it comes to, like, you know, being a little bit, like, having, like, the art side or, like, the creative side for you, so I, I kind of, I kind of agree with that. Uh, what about you, Lone? Like, what, what game do you think, feel, like, do you feel like needs more character customization options, or what game do you want to see have, like, a character customization option? No, anything, honestly, because it's, like, I'd rather give every, every, anything, like, more options to pick and choose, like, what do you want for that character? Oh, okay. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with, I agree with that. As I said, like, just, like, literally just like instead of just having like a regular character like a main character you could just pop yourself into the game i think that's something that's really good and i think that's something that's needed in a lot of other games um but speaking of games of course we're still on this with games but i know we got a br bunch of brand new games coming out but we've always talked about remakes and remasters okay so like we talk about major remakes and remasters that need to happen remakes and remasters that you want to see happen so what remake or remaster would you guys like to see happen so we're gonna go from me alone arch and then drac um for me personally i would like to see a remaster of excuse me sorry i would like to see a remaster of um i would say resident evil outbreak um reason being like especially with outbreak one and file two all in one game um because i feel like when it comes to like the multiplayer aspect that that game didn't really show off its multiplayer aspect where now it has an opp opportunity chance and welcome phantom how you doing phantom um with that like it gets to a point where um you know i feel like when it comes to multiplayer games stuff like that should should be a major importance so um what's up phantom how you doing Good, good. Just got off work, man. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear that you that you joined us. Um, the question is, um, is what game you would like to see remade or remastered? Um, we're gonna be going from me to Lone to Arch to Drac, and then we're gonna go to you if you would like to answer. Um, and I was saying, I was saying that, um, Resident Evil Outbreak should be on um, one of the ones that remastered, uh, a downloadable game. Yeah or a physical copy um i think that game should be brought back especially where time now like a lot of multiplayer games are here and a lot of multiplayer games are getting attention uh especially like ones that are majorly like team based so i think especially compared to what the other multiplayer games from resident evil came from i think that one would be a lot better because it brings also the classic fear from Resident Evil that you used to, so that, that that's just my answer. But uh, Lone, what would you like to see remade or remastered? Onimusha. I've actually heard that from a lot of people. A lot of people want that remade or remastered. So I don't think like Capcom forgot it exist. Hmm. <laughs> I, 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 I can honestly I can honestly agree with that. That was actually a really good um series do you feel like it should go a different route like with gameplay or should it just like a straight up remaster <laughs> uh but for other or like i just want like a get back to playing like Onimusha again you know <laughs> fair enough fair enough okay arch what about you any remakes or any remasters that you want that you're that you're trying to see in the future Oh, many. Uh, my main one, Red Dead Redemption 1 and Undead Nightmare. Okay. Uh, what's another one? Watch Dogs. I really want that to be remade. Because I feel like right now with Watch Dog Legion and everything, they kind of just run out of stuff to talk about. And it's slowly becoming cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. uh, so Watch Dogs 1, let's get that remade and restarted. Yeah. And I think, and I think finally... Um, <laughs> Game, I was, there's one game that was on the tip of my tongue. Oh yeah, God of War. Which I'm glad it's getting remade or uh, continued now, but I kind of like to see an older, a uh, younger Kratos again. You know, with the Blades of Chaos instead of, you know, uh, uh, 
basically changed the story up a bit. Like, instead of Ares, it was actually Athena who gave him the blades or something like that, you know? Yeah, understandable. I think that that would, that would actually be cool. Um, But at one point, I like, for God of War, I don't know about that one because, like, I think those games, like, especially the ones for the PS2 were, were perfect. Um, I think they were perfect the way you were. The first and the second were absolutely amazing. Um, especially the third one was great for the PS3. I just don't know about the, um, that, that prequel, but the prequel was decent. Um, I think otherwise, like, we're, we're like, the ones for, like, the PSP, the PS2s. I think those for God Wars were perfect, but I, I understand what you mean. I understand what you mean with, like, some of a remake or even remaster with a lot more better graphics. So... Yeah. Um, I think, wait, wait, one more would be The World Ends With You. Okay. Alright. I actually, I actually never played that game. I actually... I hi- highly recommend it. It's, um, it's a really good game from, from I believe, Sega, wasn't it? Um, yeah, really good. Uh, what were you, um, what were you gonna say, Long? I think it was, a uh, Square, you said? Yeah, it was Square. It was Square. The world is for you. The I world think. ends with you. Oh, ends with you. Yeah. yeah. They, they just made a sequel called the. the what were you saying, Long? Uh, sorry, sorry for interrupting, but a very underrated game. It is. Uh, they just made a they made a sequel to it called Neo: The World's End With You. Uh, played that as well. I felt the same nostalgia I did when I first played the first game. Oh, they actually that the world ends with you. You said that. Um, when did this come out? You said. Uh, when did it come out again? I know they just made a sequel to it. Uh, the first one came out back in. Wait a minute. Uh, it was like 2008 when it came yeah. out. Yeah. Oh yeah, it uh, was um Nintendo DS. Yeah. It was, yeah 2007. Oh God, Jesus. They actually, they actually re-released it for the Switch. Yeah, no, but that, but that's the the old game, so that's just the cloud version. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Oh, okay, no problem. But I actually, I actually know where this is from. I actually, um, seen seen this. It's very interesting. Um, yeah. Like especially with the design design of it, I think this is where um. Like uh, some of these characters were actually special guests in um in Dream Drop Distance for King they Hearts. They, that they were. Uh, that was their younger versions. But now Neo the World of You, which is a sequel, um, made them grow up. I guess it's continuing the story after uh, after how many years now? <laughs> mm. But um, but yeah, I would love to see a, a remaster of the first game. Oh, okay, I, that, I would like to see that. I, I guess I have to give that a try because. I think I have an emulator for Nintendo DS at the moment, so I could definitely give that a try. Um, what about you, Jack? What, what would you see as a remake or as a remaster? What would you want to see? Um, I do agree with Zet. I do want to see Anamusha. We did kind of have that remaster come, like, what was it, last year or the year before? Uh-huh. Which I do have. Uh, it was great uh, replaying that game. It brought back a lot of, a lot of memories. Uh-huh. I, I do want to see a remake of it and have the gameplay be either like God of War, uh, the new God of War, or have the gameplay be more uh, <clears throat> Sekiro, in which I think whether it's Sekiro or God of War, both ver- both gameplays would be fantastic. It'll do definitely re- really, really well as that. <clears throat> I definitely want to say that uh, another game that I want to see remake is I want to see um, I want to see uh, Dino Crisis. A lot yeah. of people sleep on Dino Crisis, uh, which yes, is technically Resident Evil with dinosaurs, but it's, it was a really great game. Uh, tr- uh, the Lost Planets trilogy is another one uh, that like they could really do a lot of things with it now now with the technology and everything that we have yeah um i'm gonna help mighty out and say dragon dogma they need to make a sequel to that they need to drop that part two let alone uh remaster part one um but they also uh one of the remakes are hell give me a remaster i don't even care the trilogy of fable not just fable uh two or fable three give me fable one 
remaster. Uh, excuse me, remaster. I actually don't know. That did part one. Give me two. Because two is where you can get married, kill your wife, and then get married. Uh, if you want a divorce or just get a regular divorce. Like, that game was wild. Um, I think those are a lot more choices that people should have. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Especially, like... It's like get married, go ahead, kill your wife, go ahead, get married again, divorce, and kill your um your divorced wife, and then get married again. Like, like damn, like. Those yeah, are, welcome to the Sims. Yeah, welcome <laughs> to welcome to the Sims. Exactly, get married to the Grim Reaper. And, uh, <laughs> and, we, and we have someone else in the audience. Uh, thank you for popping in. Um, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Mary. All right, that's Mary. Okay. How you doing, Mary? Thank you for popping in. If you want to go ahead and join us, definitely we would like for you to join in. It, like anytime, just go ahead. Um, right now we're talking about um, favorite um, remakes and remasters, and there you go. We can pop in. Let's go ahead and get in there. Um, but um, I also, uh, I also, uh, what's the name? What was I gonna say? Another remake that I want uh Eternal Darkness like honestly that's a, like there's so many games I can name Eternal Darkness The Fear First Encounter Assault Recon people don't really know about that but that was oh that was one of the best first person horror games mm. that was out like even the multiplayer was fire it was you know on par or even better like competed against Call of Duty Battlefield and all those games um another medal of honor i actually want them to bring that shit back yeah like, it's about that time it's about that time you know yeah we <laughs> need know? we need to get we need to get rid of that battlefield we need to put that medal of honor in there yeah put bring back that medal oh, yeah um uh, by the way if you then, if you could bring mary in and so you could possibly like be part of this i invited her to speak uh I, okay, then we probably... Yeah, she has to uh, accept the invite. <laughs> oh, yeah, she has to accept the invite. No, but uh, please continue. But, uh... Um, what's another... What's the name? What's another game I can think about? Um, like, there are so many games um, that I can just name that deserves, uh, if not a remake, a whole just remaster. And... Um, oh, I'm glad they brought back Fatal Frame and what they did mm -hmm. with that one. Mm -hmm. Um, I just don't know. I mean, I'm trying to think of any, uh, uh, but uh, I'm trying to think of another game that um, I want to say that deserves one because it outside of Eternal Darkness, you already said Outbreak. I'm, I'm waiting for that in Cold Veronica Remake, especially. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, oh, 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 that's what I was trying to, I forgot about. I don't know how I forgot about this. Even though, yes, we there are rumors about the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 re remaster, which I'm, shout out to Maximilian Dude for that one. That, that was, I'm, I can't wait for it to drop. Uh, but uh, Super uh, KO uh, Boxing yeah. and Power Stone. Yeah. Super KO Boxing and Power Stone. I need that shit, especially Power Stone. We need and deserve a fucking remake of that game. That it was one of the most fun. Uh, I get party fighters. I think that's what they uh, Smash is considered. Yeah, uh, and what's the name Brahalla? That's how that game was. It was a party fighter, but it was like one of, if not the best. That game was just Chef's Kiss. Yeah. Um, House of the Dead would be cool arcade wise, but I wouldn't mind it coming back. Um, and I, 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 I want to say one more, and the last one is I do wish they bring back the Legacy of Chain series. Mm. That's bro. If they bring back Soul Reaver, and bro, I will be like, yo, listen listen y'all gonna see your boy streaming that like almost every day because i love soul reaver one was great i just had a bugged version it wouldn't let me continue the game for some reason actually it was so bugged that it sent me to the end of the game when i died like it, it like started me at the end of the game and i tried to fight beat the final boss and it didn't work out like literally i it i think i bought the no someone told me they was like yo you need this thing in order to uh no i bought the book that's what it was i bought the the strategy guy and it was like you need this to beat the final boss you can't beat him without this and i'm like but 
it spawned me at the end of the game. I can't go back and get it. And it, it, it was funny. It was definitely funny. Uh, funny because um, I didn't get, I wasn't able to beat it. But um, it, honestly, the combat and everything else was fun. It was definitely a great game. One of the better, if not best, vampire games next to your Castlevania series, underrated Blood Rain series, and um, what's the name? D. It was another vampire game that I'm sleeping on. Uh oh, Blade. I ain't gonna lie, the original Blade, especially Blade Two, Blade Two on PlayStation One. No, it was two. It was PlayStation Two. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, like I've seen. I've actually played a whole bunch of those games, especially like you know Soul Reaver and like Legacy of Kane. They really need to bring that back. It really needs without a doubt. Yeah, bring that back. I, I I have to see like someone like 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 a big company grab that again. Like I would say I would say like if they're gonna go to that route because I think it was a hack and slash with, with puzzles and everything. Yeah. I think they need to give that to Santa Monica then. They, they need to because there's, I just, there's, yeah. one, there's one more game I forgot to mention. What's up? 007. Anything Bro, that's I can't wait for that remaster or remake it's supposed to drop. I cannot wait for that to drop. Oh man, isn't it just a port right now? No, nah, yeah. they, it's a. Uh, they say it's a remake. Um. Okay. So well, they they said they were gonna do a remake, but there is a port for the Xbox and the Nintendo Switch, which Xbox got the shit hand of it, and they were literally told that um that the multiplayer aspect for online will only be on the Switch. That's dumb, but uh. Yeah, yeah, that it is ridiculous. But wait, wait, wait! I know Phantom has been like waiting to like to come up with it, like the the remakes and the remaster. So before we get onto that, I want to hear what remakes and what remasters on um, Phantom wants. Wants. Well, I'm kind of like Arch, big on JRPG, and I have three that comes to mind that nobody has even touched since it's been made. The first one is Legend of Dragoon. That needs yeah. to be re like right now. Yeah. Uh, it's been too long since there's been a sequel or any talks of it. That game was just so good. Uh, the original Xenogears. Mm. That was the, one of the best RPGs I've ever played in my life. Uh, they need to remake that. I mean, they had the capabilities. I just saw with Xenoblade Chronicles and all that. They had the capabilities to make that game look good. And for people who have never played the original Persona 1 and 2, they need to remake that as well. Yeah, I, I have those for because they have the PSP ports. I have all right. three of them. And they're actually, they're actually really, really good. Um, right. If you see the there is one, There is one remake I forgot to mention. It just popped in my head. And that is, um, I can't, not only, I would say True Crime, because I, I ain't gonna lie, I did like True Crime a little bit better than uh, Grand Theft Auto during that time when it came out. I think it was three. But one game I do want them to remake is Manhunt. Uh huh. Uh huh. Like, yeah, if they remake Manhunt, oh man. And yeah. they can. And like, with the technology that we have, they can make all the death scenes that Manhunt had even more gruesome. Yeah. So I, I and like if they need to, they could put it in Resident Evil's engine, and that shit would be chef's kiss. That and Bully. I forgot Bully too. That's another one. Bully. Yeah. They, they or if not, they have to make a fucking sequel for Bully. And that shit should have. They're talking about making a sequel for it. Yeah. I saw somebody. I saw somebody do the whole thing in a in, um unreal engine and it looks amazing and it's like yeah you know what why don't why don't we just do it like that like you know do that whole game and then unreal engine because bully was literally the game where i was playing in high school like in high school middle school i was like i was playing those constantly so i definitely agree with that um there's also one game i want to add to uh, sure. fire i'm sorry which one breath of fire Breath oh. of Fire. Yes, I've heard of that series. Oh yeah. my god! Yes. Good series. They they need to um they need to also remaster uh, uh Xeno Saga. Yes. Xeno Saga yeah. one, two, and three. I tried to get an emulator for Xeno Saga one. That that shit is too intense. I don't know why it doesn't work, and it pisses me off that it doesn't work. Um. There's one game that is very very underrated. That is a gem. 
the two, two, excuse me, two of them that are gems in the gaming industry, major gems that need to either be reported or remastered. Uh, one was for PlayStation. It was a two-disc um, game. It was called Thousand Arms. I played that one. You. That was. Yeah, they need to remaster that because that was a gem of an RPG, a, J, a JRPG, which including like dating, and it was like it was like something that actually like got you into like like not just JRPG and and then like it also got people into Sims like it was like, like Sim dating, I would say something like that. Um, there's that and one of Hideo Kojima's most treasured projects of all time since they're big right now especially on the switch and on pc they need to bring back snatcher they they need to remaster snatcher or port that shit again that is a game on the sega cd one of the most popular games on sega cd story wise it's amazing graphic wise is amazing gameplay it's amazing and this is one of the most genius stories that Hideo Kojima has done. Especially from watching and playing the game from beginning to end. That is a that is something that could be a, a show if they actually let Hideo Kojima direct it. So that's one of the major things that you could go for remasters as well. Um does, does anybody else have anything like remakes or remasters or anything? Nope. All right. That's it. Oh, um, oh, you you want to say one, Arch? No, I said that's it. Oh, okay, no problem. All right, so now we're gonna go into like a little bit more deep, like I would say a little bit more deeper um su- um subjects. Um, by the way, Mary, um, I know that um. Jack went ahead and tried to get you in, in here. Uh, just raise your hand again to see if we could possibly get you in here so you could um, join in. Um, like, like if, if, if he sends you like an invitation, you have to make sure you just hit the accept button and then you can pop in. Um, so this has been a, like a conversation that I wanted to speak to a lot of people about. And that is the balance between a developer and the consumer. And this is why i mean like a certain balance um so here's here's one this is where i came up with this you guys know about the um the game um adventures on monkey island or return of return to monkey island yeah okay so um there was a there was a whole entire developer he had a new design for it um he got a new art new artwork for it and he posted on a personal personal blog for him and you know to keep on posting and for the consumer to look at it and get like little like you know previews of the game here and there um it got to a point where he was bullied he would he would send death threats to and he he got so upset about it that he closed the whole blog and stopped giving previews um do you feel like there's because of situations like that do you feel like there should be a balance between the relationship between a developer and a consumer? Like, should like should there be boundaries? Should 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 they be limited? Like 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 personally, I think they should because it gets to like a situation like that because it gets to a point where like someone gets bullied out of it and he literally states that it's not fun anymore or something like that. Should not it should not lead to someone to not want to do what they love to do. So um, with that, we're gonna start with um with Phantom, and then we're gonna go Phantom, Drac, Arch, and Lone. So Phantom, what 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 do you feel about that? Sorry about that. I'm back. No problem. Uh, Phantom. Sorry, we get we. Hello. I think he's gonna be back in a second. Okay, then we'll um we'll go back to him when he comes back. Um, so we're gonna start with you, Drac. Do you feel like like especially what I described? Um, unless you need me to describe it again, um, because I know you just got back. Um, do you, 
um as i said like there was a whole thing with um return of monkey island the developer got bullied off his blog where he was sharing like all the stuff like you know like scenes like artwork from the game and he closed off the blog because he got threat it's he got threats and he got literally bullied off his whole entire um his blog so i'm asking like should it be a balance between the relationship between a developer and a consumer should it be boundaries should someone be limited like how do you feel about that I do believe that it should be what's you know, a certain level of respect or boundaries in in place and that just goes for not only just games and developers just in life in general uh because the fact that i understand like ever since the cyberpunk issue were and that's uh i mean with that people try to say like that was unfortunately a slippery slope so now everybody believes they can go to any developer and talk crazy to them in order to try to get either the game they want want to release you know just be an ass or whatever excuse that they have to be an ass and honestly it's not warranted it really isn't like i understand what what cyberpunk it was in the sense of people were mad because they were promised something and didn't get it, so they voiced their opinion. But these are just being folks are just being entitled schmucks on the internet. And it's definitely what's the I feel like uh, I'm sorry that he felt a way of you know closing a blog because you know he didn't you know he got pretty much you no know, couldn't handle the toxicity of it. But I feel like he shouldn't have closed the blog because that's exactly what they wanted they wanted him to do because when it comes to people being toxic as someone who's been a content creator for six plus years basically whenever someone wants to get like once you leave and like pretty much uh uh delete your account uh, account or you know pretty much make it to where it says there's you no longer there you pretty much allowed the people that you know is talking to you crazy you you pretty much let them win they don't feel a sense of accomplishment that like yeah look at them run but if you don't run and you run and be like okay you can talk your shit and then literally mute block report and do those things now unless they're going behind that and getting aggressive uh very aggressive like threatening to kill you and all this other stuff that's definitely way way past you know boundaries in its own right when you get to that part yeah that way like what if it's like um reddit or whatever your blog is on it's their responsibility to be no to police that like yo listen they're doing this on your site you need you need to handle that and then along with you know you report it into the right authorities and that way if something does happen not only you have a paper trail but also you can try to get those people off the internet and there's an internet and it's just like what my opinion i mean how i feel about it is just that yeah there should be a sense of boundaries where you shouldn't be try to bully a developer or a company in that way i understand having your opinion and not liking the game and saying yo listen the game either looks like this looks like that that and actually have some type of constructive criticism like it may look like this and that but here's what no i think the game will make the game better like okay the game looks dull add this these colors to brighten it up you know that type of deal but once you just being an ass just saying this game's trash trash your mama's trash and all this other dumb shit you don't have anything to add to help this man make a good game and at that point yeah that's when uh, they need to get off the platform because they're just doing that just to act edgy and act like the what's the ridiculous painting waste that unfortunately some folks in the next generation even people in my generation are, act like yeah i i definitely agree with that um especially like like my personal opinion like this is what i would do as if i was a game developer um especially like a lot of people have gotten that to a certain extent actually you know i'm gonna i'm gonna hold that off because actually for our next topic um arch what 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 do you think 
what do you, do you feel like there should be a balance between the relationship between a developer and the consumer or is it like some boundaries or like something that should be placed especially with that type of situation or situation similar like that as a game creator content creator and consumer i would have to say it definitely needs boundaries not everybody's criticism is for the best uh i don't agree with the topic that every uh we call it every customer is right and every customer is not right and it's the same thing for game creation not every customer is going to bring good we call it topics or debates to help you with your game they just like to criticize it um and i think a lot of people especially with game creators that that we call it, that review hits their feelings hard because they put their lives, their souls. Not many people know how actually long it takes to make a game. It takes years. It takes years of practice. It takes years of learning, training. It takes years, and you have to be really interested in your in your creation to actually p- even put it out there. Yeah. And for somebody just to come knock that down and knock that down for no good points or no good reason, just to knock it especially how it is nowadays where you can just put one bad thing on the internet and people are just going to roll with it. it it's hard so i think yeah there definitely needs to be some like walls or barriers between the consumer and the developer itself themselves yeah um as a person who worked with like some of the programs like you know like the maya program um unity unreal engine um it's definitely a difficult thing uh not just from the game art perspective game development especially is extremely hard uh from things like you know regular like model creation uh textures lighting even ui and ux not, not even just that though too you also got story uh, you got the we call it progression you have stats yeah everything character it's background coding. everything yeah yeah it's 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 people don't realize how difficult and like how stressful that job is especially in the game development area where you have to learn like two different languages of coding which is partially why i i didn't do either i went to uh we call it school for game design actually for like what three four years mm-hmm. um i don't want to do it honestly coming out of school learning that shit i don't want to do it fair it's enough too fucking- it's too crazy out here now fair enough i completely understand that, that especially with me i'm trying to go back to school i'm trying to do that so i completely understand that aspect um what about um you zet you, um do you feel like that there should be a balance between the consumer and the and the developer like any type of boundaries how, how would you feel about that yeah, yeah there, sh- there should be boundaries i mean like but yeah, yeah. I don't know what to say, to be honest. Understandable, understandable. I just like, I just think like you know, as I say, it comes with bad criticism and good criticism. Um, like, I get like if I'm making a game, I can't come up with the idea of just like two words, just like basically saying you suck. I can't, or like, or this sucks. I'm like, I I'm sorry, but like if I get like someone like contacting me like messaging me I'm like I, I don't like the way this looks I feel like it's a little bit like you know dry maybe you can add this maybe you can make this like cool I would like to see this like like if you give me that then I could work with something but if you're just saying with like something like if I'm putting like a blog about the game and it just says oh your mama like that that doesn't help me <laughs> I, like, like, like I can't make cyberpunk better with your mama like like it's, it's it's like something like that you can't really do something with that um and with this 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 actual discussion comes up to our next topic um we've seen things like you know pushing of games like delaying them you know um games that have been not supported in certain areas like some from kickstarters even from AAA games and that haven't gotten major um like you know sequels like uh like for instance like you know how the guy from days gone who made the days gone video game blames um the consumers for not buying the fo- like the actual game um and I, I i think that that brings up a point because like especially the strongest thing from consumer is the consumer's wallet to, to choose to buy something or to go ahead and not buy something which helps a company succeed 
especially in the gaming industry. Um, do you feel when it comes to a failure of a game, or especially like you know, if a game like you know is very successful or if a game fails majorly? Should a consumer be held accountable or should like a consumer be held accountable for certain action like like threats or punt or like any type of punishments? Um, and I mean like mean like this like I said like I want like if I possibly make a game and I and let's say for instance I have developers and people work working for me I have a set date and let's say that because of like certain like the reveals or trailers people start getting death threats or certain people that work with me start getting death threats my personal thing especially how i feel like just because someone works in the gaming industry or does their job like a developer because sometimes the developers don't have the freedom to choose what they what they want it's all based on the business area if like a developer in my business gets threatened i will personally delay the game as a punishment and only because of the fact that I wouldn't mind paying extra money for them to work on it more. And also the fact that I don't feel that someone who is a developer who doesn't have the choice to add in the game, they have to do what a business area wants, should be threatened for that. So my question is, should a consumer, especially in the gaming industry, be held accountable? So we're going to um, start with Zet. So Zet, how do you feel about that? Man, it all depends, like, how much of it escalates to the point where, like, cops have to get involved to get that consumer punished. Okay. I, 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 I kind of agree with that, especially, like, how certain, like, especially with Borderlands, like, they had a detective get involved when the guy kept on selling, sending links and everything. So I completely understood that. Um, Arch, what, what do you feel about that? Uh, wait, what, what's the question? Should a consumer be held accountable for things like, you know, threats or any type of like, you know, harassment or any type of way that a game fails? Should a consumer be held accountable for that? Because well, like a, con a consumer's wallet is very, very powerful. Do you feel like the consumer should be held accountable for either one of those things? Threats? Yes. Um, other thing else, especially with the game failing? No. Um, that's, uh, that's the thing, it's one person who doesn't feel like uh, playing the game or doesn't like it. But look at Cyberpunk. I, 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 hate, I hate that we have to bring it up now because Cyberpunk is just that overused thing in the gaming world now because it made such a comeback. But look at it. It made a comeback because of the consumer. Yeah. Yes, they have, they, they have to go a, a different route because usually consumers just put out a game and people like it. But when the game first came out, it was a jumbled, glorified mess, and everybody could see that. Nobody wanted it. And nobody was playing the game to see that it was actively fixing itself with different updates. When I first started it again, I noticed like there was a multiple updates that nobody else had talked about um, until the anime came out. So I don't, think, I don't think it's the consumer's fault, and they shouldn't be held accountable for a game failing. I think it's honestly... The advertisement and the way the game first comes out or is perceived. Okay, that's a, that's a reasonable part of that. I agree with that. I definitely do agree with that. Especially the consumer help like make the game sell twenty more, twenty million more copies. So especially not just that, just support also for the anime also did that. So that's that's understandable. Like uh, like look at the, like I'm pretty sure when you first got uh, when the game first came out, you bought a copy. No. Uh, um, but do you know? Uh, I'm pretty sure you don't have that same exact copy you did before. Yeah. I mean, look, look at what Drax said before. He he got the game. He stopped playing it, and he's about to get the game again. I, I've actually had the same copy. I just got it updated for PS5. <laughs> but um, <laughs> after the updates, it, it, it got way better. Like my first yeah. guy, it was complete trash. I I agree. It was complete a, a mess. It was like it was like a kid. It's like like this is cyberpunk it's like a, a toy chest right you have taken out all the fucking toys from the chest and then it's all over the floor that's how it was yeah yeah so i i definitely agree with that um but like i mean like certain things like like held accountable like i hold like 
consumers accountable for why ea is still doing what it's doing um like especially how many people complain about major things that ea has done and you know what is powerful as i said the powerful thing is their wallet so though people could just be like oh we're not buying from ea they still managed to like go ahead and still um buy and buy and buy and buy like um like for instance ea should have went down because of anthem anthem made it lost within like almost a billion dollars like because of how like what happened with anthem which anthem was hype anthem was was interesting and i liked the game but then it got to a point where it was like okay this is not people are liking it people think it's just a complete mess and with that they lost a large amount of money and people were just like wondering like oh why is ea still doing this well because people kept buying and people kept buying and kept buying especially for these sports games that like you know have like these freaking these pull out for cards and like you know stuff like that so I, th that's where like that's why i mean like with accountability but like for the cyberpunk part i completely understand where, where you're coming from on that um drac what do you what do you feel about that like how do you feel about this topic Drac? How I feel about it is... <clears throat> I feel about, um... How I feel about it is just basically... Can you repeat it again? I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Um, do you feel um as if the consumer should be held accountable for certain things? Like, like for instance, if a game fails, or if like you know if there are threats like if threats threats like you know um sent to a gaming company or if, like should there be punishments for the um consumer because of that like how, how do you feel about that yeah i think it goes back to the conversation we had about boundaries is that people get go past that that line of boundaries and i think it should be to where once you go to the past uh, the level of boundaries you become disrespectful i think there should be a punishment for that that way it'll deter people into not wanting uh wanting to do it um like i don't i mm -hmm. think that uh yeah just that people just whatever reason they're shitting on the game where it's um because if you truly like the game stuff you wouldn't be shitting on it without a way to make it better you know what i mean so the fact that you have people that over there laughing about that means they probably did it before and got away with it and they haven't met the right person to humble them into showing that yo it's not right that, that, that's an interesting point what, what do you feel as if is like you said like there should be like like something in regards to being held accountable do you feel like there should be a punishment if so what would be a punishment for a consumer I believe that um, I believe the punishment for the consumer is that once you get to the past the level of harassment, that um, <clears throat> the punishment of harassment, as far as I know that, you know, the basic, they could call 911 and hope that they come, or where's well, the consumer? The thing that they could do is that um, pretty much, um, if they try to buy well because they can still do it digitally so that wouldn't work one thing they can do when they're um when i like to a consumer i'm trying to think outside of the usual uh, well actually no i was gonna say just borrow them from because it would be kind of hard to say borrow them from getting the game or to be supportive of the game but it's kind of hard yeah, uh, but i yeah. will say that definitely if they try to do multiplayer have it to where their thing is set to where they can't play multiplayer okay that, that, that's understandable i i think that would be a good one I, like i said like personally um um like literally i've gotten to a point where like if i'm a developer and i have my 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 team getting death threats i would literally delay the game um like like it gets to a point where it's like you know if you're just gonna throw death threats then i'm gonna make you wait like either another two weeks 
or if it's constantly i'm gonna make you wait another month or two months um and that, that, that's just where i'm gonna be at with that like because uh, as i said a developer or people just doing their job shouldn't be like you know like you know threatened that's like me going to a, a place where they make sandwiches they um they try they they make the sandwich for me and then like you know instead of just like you know telling them hey um you forgot to put this um let's say mayonnaise on my sandwich i just know th- death threats or something yeah like then 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 right there they, they would just literally just kick you out for that so that that's just that's just my place on that um yeah you definitely shouldn't have them be part of any groups meetups or anything like that have them report it to yeah. the right authorities because um that once they if they get to the point where they're talking about you know harming a person but uh like because it's it, it's the type of behavior that people make excuses for by trying to say it's freedom of speech when it's not you just literally either being an ass like um you're being asked in two different ways you're being an ass by either talking well about them uh, uh, but it's not well, you're being an ass by still actually providing constructive criticism that you're just being an ass and then the other part is that you're fucking it up for that creator that has that what's the name that you know like our said earlier mm-hmm. these people really put most of their their life into me into making this art like and it goes for people who are artists like actually just artists outside of gaming you when you have something or cooking and baking you put your whole your a lot of people put literally everything into that field mm-hmm. and when you have that one person that doesn't want to do the do is that that just you know and ask no reason rather than giving actual constructive criticism and hide behind freedom of speech or whatever excuse they can come up with it's uh disheartening it makes you not want to do what you're doing and everything but i would say don't do uh stop because that's what they want you to do oh. as i am so um that's i i like what certain companies whereas uh instead of normalizing it or letting them you know, by allowing it to happen or um accepting that behavior that there's ones that say you're not gonna be you're not gonna be with this game or anything around me mm. uh, talking like that you know what i mean yeah or I com- yeah being like that yeah yeah no i completely understand that that's definitely that's definitely a, like especially respect the response Actually, I agree with that response extremely. Um, Phantom, you there? Hello. He just unmuted. I, I, I think I think it's about, uh, it might be something with his mic. Yeah, it's because um we can't hear you, Phantom. Uh, oh. uh, if you want Phantom, uh, type it in no mic if you're able to. All right, so like, but yeah, let me see. Um, let's, let's type in no mic. Let's see. Um, so, but, but yeah, that's um, that's where I I would be with it. Um, I I just like I I don't know. It's just like something with that, especially um, with something that could literally get to a point where you're just threatening someone's life for a video game. Yeah, I would have a major issue with that. Um especially with me i have like a major issue with that in general like as i said like someone especially they happen in many different instances uh cyberpunk um developers got death threats um there were some death threats uh, especially um i don't know if you're playing overwatch um uh the voice the voice actor for brigitte got a death threat because the character broke the meta and and but it was a voice actor. They, they they knew nothing about how the game was created. They just they just do voice acting, you know, and stuff like that. It gets to a point where it's like that's a little bit too much on that. Um, so and it is. It, it needs to be enforced. Where uh, like have things enforced for it to uh, to protect uh, those voice actors and devs for that. Because I mean a lot of those people that be talking shit about these people won't i always say this and it's very true 
to this day. A lot of them won't say that to the person's face. Like they'll they'll have the balls to go on Twitter or social, like just social media in general, and say that. But once they're uh, like one on one with that person, they're not gonna say that to their face. They're not gonna have the balls or the ovaries to say that to that person's face because they uh, they don't. Is that they're what's the name? They they're not brave enough to do it or stupid enough in in both cases as in to do it because they feel safe behind a computer screen that they can do it and then you have platforms like your social in like twitter instagram facebook that allows that to happen and that needs to be you know that's something that needs to not be normalized or well it's already normalized that's what needs to be you know taken care of or getting those folks off the uh the platform or we say and then if it's a blogging website like reddit they need to get that off of there because you're a lot you're putting people you're out giving people an ability a weapon that they shouldn't have in their hands and yeah. you're allowing that to happen and for what for them that put traffic on your on your site like no it that you should be able to those it's um <clears throat> those people should be protected just like everybody else and everything like it should not come to a point where you can't put a form of art while you know being like uh threatened like your life threatened but when it comes to just people just saying oh you freaking suck you also gotta have the ability to uh what's the name um like for example twitter if you mute people you don't have to see that shit but at the same time you don't want to hide behind negative criticism and be like yo i don't want to see negative criticism because yeah, it's criticism because and you just only accept positive criticism mm-hmm. you're also lying to yourself i want to also put that out there too you want to see as well, at least for me i want to see the good and the bad now if you're being disrespectful then yeah uh get that off it's like off goes back to that but when it goes to oh you said this sucks i gotta run no that is a as a creator you gotta be willing to say okay this person doesn't like this bad this if they're like-minded be like okay why do you not like this art why do you not like this and if they can give a reason then that's one uh, reason then cool then you can build off of that if they don't and they're just talking out their ass then by all means ignore it but you don't want to just have nothing but positive uh, just see positive criticism because that's not good either because you're limiting yourself on thinking that all oh, if i'm putting out shit then that shit is good <laughs> and then it also puts you in a spot where you're going to keep it to where you only want yes men unintentionally put yes men in your corner and you don't want that as uh as someone who does art whether it's music video games mm-hmm. um excuse me whatever form of art that you put out the poetry whatever art that you put out there you don't want to uh, put yourself in that situation where you end up like yo only want yes men essentially next to me you want to see the good and the bad and then take okay you think that shit i'm gonna sh- i'm gonna put this out there and it's gonna shut you up like take it as a even if it's they don't provide a criticism make you know say hey this is how to make it better use that bullshit to also as your advantage to say i'm gonna shut you up with this oh you don't like this boom now what and then see if they say anything oh okay it, <laughs> can you hear me now yep yeah we got you oh okay you. Uh, yeah, sorry sorry about that uh right. yeah i agree with all of that uh basically you know, as a person who who is going to be in an IT field, just like you, you are with your, you know, in the gaming industry, that's a lot of money for technology in general. And I feel like as a consumer, you should want to, you know, help those people that you, you love. But also as a publisher, you got to make sure you're giving the people what they want, but never uh, stray away from your own art. Yeah, yeah, you gotta kind of keep it authentic, but also kind of appeasing. You listen for feedback, but don't go away because you know how you want your your art to be. You know how you envision it, and you know how to make it happen. And a lot of these consumers don't understand, uh, you know, the trials that these these creators go through. 
Mm. And you know, Arch had a good a good example again with you know, with Cyberpunk. You know, Street Fighter Five is one of the good examples as well because you saw how quickly they produced Street Fighter Five and what happened when it first came. Out. Oh, that was a dog shit show when it first came out. I, I trust me, I paid a hundred bucks for that shit. Yeah. Jesus. It, it, it would. It was horrible, and I wish they would do would have done more beta testing on that to see how bad the netcode was. And because they they could have fixed that, and but it progressed though. The people stuck around. They started offering the consumers, "Hey, how about a free trial to try out Street Fighter Five? Yeah. You know, if you like it, you like it, you buy it." Yeah. I think more companies should do that. They should offer free trials and everything. You know, like say you know with Mortal Kombat when Mortal Kombat Twelve comes out, I think they should do that. Uh, same with Street Fighter Six. Uh, eventually, I think they should do a trial after the first season. This even if anybody wants to pick it up uh, that goes for any game though you know that, that's where that free to play uh, uh, comes in where you're trying to figure out do you want to do free to play with your your product or do you want to have you know have uh, to, to pay for every single thing that comes out no, I, I want to interject that. real quick and say I do agree with that and look at and you also agree with Phantom said when it comes to you know <laughs> listening to your feedback and when it comes to listening to your feedback you want to be transparent like one thing i like about multiverses is that they're very transparent we're like yo this update's gonna have this this update's gonna have that uh have that or okay shaggy is busted what was that aspect you guys say is busted okay this is what we did to shaggy or here's ideas of what we're gonna do with shaggy with you know their uh videos and stuff and people it gets positive feedback then they put it in if negative they see they try to salvage what you know what was negative about it in order to bounce overly balance the game but at the end of the day they're very transparent they've talked to what bungie used to be like when it came to like the halo games they talk to the consumers and that's why bungie was considered that company that had that beautiful relationship with the consumers because they you know they didn't treat them like numbers like your bigger companies uh companies they actually listen to consumers and then say oh you don't like it blah, 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 blah. like don't ever have that attitude and i think that's what fucked right. over cyberpunk because with that a lot of people were mad is a were mad because they were shown this beautiful what beautiful game but in those trailers they only did like the pc uh port or the maybe the is at the time they didn't do ps they didn't have the ps5 and the series x version out so they did the pc so when people was thinking oh shit you know i'm gonna get that that especially when they should have just said listen we're not going to release the ps4 version and been transparent about it and be like yeah. this is why because this is how it looks on the ps we're not going to lie to you and say that this pc version how beautiful it looks is going to look on your ps4 i know people try to go with the idea of, well you should have known that but no he's saying whether you know that or not that's what was being shown not is that shown so that's still lying to your consumer and that's one thing you don't want to do is because when you do do that that type of practice and then there was a lot of other stuff that was underhanded that they uh see uh cyber cd project red did with the development of cyberpunk but um just going off the synapses just off of that um that's why a lot of people will turn against you and then start being giving you you know getting to the point where some people will just say fuck you or go to the extreme and give you death threats because they're not going to want to support a company that says yo we're going to release it on everything it's going to look like this and my version looks like shit or the version that is supposed to be great is buggy that shit and i'm like wait and I'm like i can't even play this game and i spent 60 dollars and your response is yeah you just hating on the game like no fix the game he's like you knew this before the game dropped and that's why a lot of people didn't fuck with cyberpunk for a while until they finally gotten better with their practices and transparency was but nowadays are a lot more transparent a lot more you know hands-on and because of that 
that's what made people go back to you no know, kind of forgive even though some people don't forgive cd project a lot of people said okay you learned your lesson we're glad you learned your lesson we did a uh, lesson now you can be the company that we want you to be and that uh, we can have that relationship and now with the anime a lot more people has jumped on the game and i hope that still goes on for the dlc but um there are companies and capcom with street Fighter uh five where we uh, they just dropped a game with like five six characters and people was like what happened to the other characters and it was back and forth tongue in cheek and then destiny with the eververse system uh square enix with avengers uh let alone kingdom hearts 3 and then uh <laughs> and <laughs> it's that companies had their what's the name were at activision unfortunately themselves uh but uh what when it came to call call of duty world war ii especially um and then uh i would say ubisoft with um i want to say it was like watchdogs legion was the big talk and for honor and i want to say it was like the newer assassin's creeds like uh, origins on up that a lot of people had issues because of the things that were they it's not even that it was all oh, expecting that and it wasn't there that was a consumer that's a consumer issue but if it's no it's gonna be in there and it's not in there that's not a consumer issue that's a developer issue and that shouldn't be told it's gonna be in there or uh, their if it was taken out before pre-launch or post uh explain why it was taken out be transparent and apparently if they get mad the consumer gets mad that's the consumer's issue shoot because you said the reason why i was taken out and everything before it dropped so you at least show transparency but if you don't show that it's no it's kind of hard to back you up as as a developer if you're not being you know honest about your product because it goes to false advertisement um yeah, I, yeah. I, I think it, i think it goes to a certain extent um i think for like certain things with telling the consumer i think there's a limit to what you should be telling the consumer um, yeah, you don't want to tell them everything. Like, like, you, you, like, like, if you like, you want to be like transparent, like to like give them a reason why you have this or why you took this out. Then yeah, but with telling them like what everything is going to be added in the game, I I, I wouldn't. Um, no, I, I, you're right, and I agree with that. But to explain why was something was taken out and why you know uh why something's taken out wasn't added that was supposed to originally been added and stuff like that that's something the consumer wants to, i mean should know you know yeah that that is that is a fair point like like it was like for something that's been taken out or added and yeah you should the consumer should know but like it goes to like a certain extent like where people like um like people look at a trailer and then say like when they get something a little bit different like slightly different then they they're like it's false advertising which is not true um because there were certain things that like you know even from a certain trailer especially for like doom that were that were changed slight uh, slightly uh certain things that were added slightly um and i don't think like i don't understand like maybe if it was like a big big change for the game then yeah they should know about it but nothing that is that needs to be slightly added like I interject real quick uh, and say a good example is the Division Part One. Like when they showed the E3 trailer and the way that it looked and played, once it dropped, it was a totally, it was literally like a night and day situation where I was like, wait, like after I saw the original, how Division was supposed to be, I was like, what changed and they only think to this day they explain what happened to the game i was like wait a minute the like from the the ui system from the original to the the uh act that when the game launch was different yeah. how like it was played it was just a totally different game and then i feel like another good example is anthem and anthem the way how it was in the trailer that trailer wasn't the same as it was when the game dropped and i feel like that is something that should have been talked about and like yo you know different script writers or you know something happened whatever you don't have to go too deep into it to it but at least be like listen you know there was some change we have to do some massive changes to where it doesn't look like how it does from the trailer but it still has the heart of the game essentially and even uh one of my favorite uh 
in the horror games did the same thing visage visage when it came out is totally different than how it was in the trailer from what i was hyped about but it was still good it just as i which is you know i'm glad like you know not a lot of games are like that <laughs> yeah. cough cough uh agony <laughs> yeah, agony was agony was something special definitely was not what it was when it first was announced and the trailer dropped and i think that's where what games like that you definitely gonna have to explain what the fuck happened like that that's a night and day now it's like how you said like it's a slight change or something uh, where it's like you know the game's still the same but you know that scene's just not in there or it's been retweaked then that's fine like it's still captured the game is still the same though but if it's like the the game is like legit you over there running off the walls you gu doing gunplay all this crazy stuff but when the game comes out you can't run off the walls it's very linear <laughs> and yeah. then your character keeps tw uh, twitching on some random spot in that map and like falls into the falls beneath the map for no reason i'm gonna be like wait a minute what just happened yeah like what? like like those changes like like anything like movements and stuff like that should be a major thing to talk about um a changing ui i don't think should really be a big deal um as i said like something like that is not really that intensely crazy because of the fact that the ui is going to literally be changed um well, and i mean as far as when i meant to like ui like if it's like i mean i understand you're like okay that's their basic ui is going to be changed i mean as far as like the way how the ui is works within the game like if it's like you know goes like goes with like the gameplay and then uh play and it's like i'm trying to give a good example uh i mean interject with that are you talking about like how you like you go to the menu you're trying to figure out how to like work the menu and stuff like within the game like for example say for instance um you have a um, like re how the ui system is like resident evil 2 remake but when you get the game it's like the original resident evil ui system you're like wait a minute that type of deal where it's like you know where it's supposed to be like in game and you don't have to the game doesn't pause like you know the, it's seamless with your gameplay but then when you play the game it's not like that okay so like like if it works well with the gameplay yeah okay yeah like like I like like I understand like I understand that if it works well with the gameplay because that's what the UX is about to have the customer or the the person who interacts with it have a better experience and understanding the um the menus and everything. Um, I was talking about like you know design like especially like if oh, like nah. and they change like a like a, like a look of the UIs like yeah that's not really that important to have to discuss. Um, like. Like for instance, like they, they did that way even with God of War. God of War had a different UI from the trailer to what it has now, man. Oh yeah. Yeah. So like I, I mean like something like that, but like with with what you're describing, I completely understand that one. Um, and I guess like when it comes to like 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 this topic, especially with what like you know, like I think what what like you know a consumer should be accountable about about. Um. Let's talk about um the the leaks the the GTA Six leaks. Um, so did so they went ahead and discussed it that it was a whole bunch of leaks like ninety plus videos. Apparently, it was ten thousand pages of coding. Um, there was like all different types of videos of gameplay and looks of that, and it was by um some 15, 16 year old um punk from freaking from the UK. And, oh man, that was a lifesaver. I didn't think GTA 6 existed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 with that, they actually caught him. With that, oh, yeah. yeah, they caught him doing that, and now um, they're either probably gonna take. Now he, he pleaded not guilty, which is obviously you are guilty. They fucking traced your ass, um, and because of something like that, like there was a response that like there won't it won't go ahead and get held back but people looked at like the the stuff that was not done and then they were really really judgmental on it where it was not fully finished so companies in return actually started you know showing their their first beginning projects of like games like control 
uh, things like um, God of War and other other games here and there. And I, li I like how people came to the aid of that. I think that's pretty cool. Um, but what this kid did was absolutely a shitty thing. Man, they complete, oh, yeah. Completely 100% shitty. Um, I don't care how long we've been waiting for GTA 6. I, I think I think we were I think we were taught how to fucking be patient. Um, it's like if it got to a point where it got very bad, the like let's say for instance that he, he took the coding where he almost tried to bribe them, and yeah he almost tried to bribe them for the coding back. He's like you want the code back? You gotta give me money. So when he tried to bribe them, that was ten thousand pages of coding. It would have to change 10,000 pages of fucking coding. And coding yeah. is, is difficult by itself. That would lead, that, that could possibly lead to a delay. But apparently they said it's not going to, which I highly, I don't, I, I highly disagree. Um, I don't know. Like, may say that it won't, but it probably will, who knows. Which they said, they showed them like, you know, different things. Like, sadly, I can't show it because now YouTubers who even have it actually are getting, um, their shit taken right. down yeah which rightfully so like like that's something that was leaked and that especially like a lot of companies are like cracking down on that like even borderlands 3 did that um especially with cracking down on that and then people were upset with the fact that he got arrested like no this is a 16 year old kid where he actually did this before and they just gave him a slap on the wrist but personally in my opinion he needs to be put in jail and for forever how long or if not whatever how much how much money they're willing to sue him he should be paying that on the spot and no you're absolutely right he uh whatever even though yes people isn't as the joke i mean like uh we got to see gta 6 that was cool uh cool that uh we got to see it but at the same time he did it's like legit do um extortion mm -hmm. like he really tried to extort this company out of money for a game they've been working for for like the past 10 to 20 years mm -hmm. so i would definitely say that yeah whatever is a big hefty fine to jail time he needs to serve that like rightfully so anybody that disagrees with that i don't know where your mindset is but he uh -huh. does deserve to take some form of penalty because he did and not only steal something from a company but then try to extort them for money and or me and yeah extort them for money of their own product like that's crazy and then for the consumers that and i've seen it on twitter um of those people that was like oh this looks bad this looks that uh they it's not done yet just don't know what it means to be a game developer or working in uh, electronics it especially because i'm like obviously it's not going to look like what you think it's going to look it's literally the it's literally the outline of a of a essay like it's it's not even the rough draft it's an outline it's uh of the essay so um i would say that they um they i'm glad a lot of folks have educated them on that or have you know from it was either educated or roasted and they went off uh, <laughs> deleted their account and took the L that they took because honestly you can't fault any game developer or any form of person that does art and they show you an outline and you're going to sit there and say it's ugly when they're not even finished with it. Like wait till they finish it and then when you play in your hands then judge it by whatever, how you feel if it's good or bad but if it's not even it's literally they just started and you could tell they just started that uh you really can't you know you can't really judge it but as i judge it like like oh it's ugly is that i mean it's not gonna look pristine and my opinion from it it looks like they have a lot of stuff that's gonna be interesting in this game like the the um the map looks extremely big. It looks equal to or bigger than what we got in five. So mm -hmm. that's gonna be interesting on in what they're gonna do as far as GTA Online for six, or at least the story mode for six, because they say that now it's supposed to be Liberty City and Miami, mm -hmm. or not even just Miami, Florida itself. So you got like legit NYC and freaking Florida 
and one GTA game, and possibly uh, maybe going to California or some other places. So you got like three different areas, and then it's gonna be really a really big map. I just want to, I just hope that um, the game can hold it all. Like it doesn't, you know, do what how Cyberpunk was when it first came out and yeah. shit itself. But um, yeah, I, I got really high hopes for the game for it to drop. Now, um, I'm just, uh, I will understand the only excuse you could give to this mofo for doing what he did is I will understand if it's like the Batman situation, Batgirl, the Batgirl situation where basically uh, they were, uh, they filmed the movie and finished it and they said, you know what? We're not going to air the movie. It, it didn't test well by a uh, DC exec. So we're just going to throw the movie away. Now, if you would have said, nah, I'm going to be a hero and then show the movie, then I would probably give him me, probably be like, uh, eh, it's fucked up what he did. You need to pay for it. But I'm kind of glad he released it because we was never going to yeah. see it. But yeah. with GTA 6, we were going to see it. They just been focused more on the online aspect in order no given what people want in the online aspect just so they can have the money to continue to do gta 6 so they kind of nerfed and pretty much got rid of red dead online just so that gta online which was the money make the thing that was making the money to do red dead 2 in the first place just so that that can continue to make money so they could do gta 6. Mm -hmm. uh, six because it was to a point where because they came out and said it that's where i go with transparency is that they said that red dead online what they didn't want it to outshine gta online and people stop playing gta online because once they give up on red dead online that's it and that's it like the really rockstar really doesn't have any more games besides those two ips and so if they give up on gta online that line and red dead online only has a little much there's only so much you can do with its content because it's you know set in the what the 1900s like the cowboy um area then once that drops then what do you go to if gta online has been dethroned by that that uh online uh mechanic or I mean that online system so that's why they pretty much just gave up and just shut down gta right down online uh line or, or like, like uh, support for it because they want to focus on gta online because it's you know been making them the money that gave them I me mean, making them the money that they now have just to do gta 6. Mm -hmm. and as yeah. highly anticipated and ambiguous as this project is they need all the the scent that they can <laughs> you know, the constant money flow that they can to do it yeah because like, they're not activision they're not uh ubisoft they're not uh ea that has multiple ips they can lend on money with even square enix uh, has some IPs they can lean into, even though they took losses with Avengers, Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, people are now getting, you know, restless with Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Um, and then um, the issues that came with Final Fantasy 15, how it, you can only get the real ending by reading it online. Uh, it's just, you know, but Rockstar isn't like that. Rockstar, in a sense, is like CD Projekt Red. They don't, who has like what only The Witcher and uh, Cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. So they really had to rely on GTA Online to get that to fund GTA Six. So I understand, even though it sucks that it's been like it's taken so long for Six to drop. I'm actually ha happy that it is because now we can play GTA Six um on the playstation 5 and series x which gives you not only 4k capabilities but a lot of people don't realize you can also have it also has 8k capabilities it says it on both the boxes so you we could actually do 8k on both those consoles and then 8k if your pc is strong enough uh and do grand theft auto 6. and mm. so for it's like sometimes patience is better uh wins the battle than or not just wins the battle uh, um impatience may win the war but patience always wins uh war yeah, yeah. Your patience wins okay. the battle and yeah. patience wins the war yep yeah 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with that. Um, everything you guys are staying on that. How he could have handled the situation differently. He probably could have not went to jail if he did this. Uh, basically, he was acting like a black hat ha hacker, you know, holding him for ransom. He could have been a gray hat hacker, you know, telling the flaws of their, you know, the whole company. Be like, hey, I broke into this. You need to up your security. You know, he could have told them that. Yep. But um, no, he wants to hold him ransom. I, I, I don't feel like there's any type of good hacker, only unless, like, it's used for, like, certain well, things, like, like government-wise. There, there is. There, there is on that. Like, uh, like I said, this is what my field I'm studying right now, man. Uh, there is. That's why you had the white hat hacker and everything. That's the pen testers that you have, like for like banks and everything. Mm. And they're pretty much they go in there, they do this to tell them, hey, this is what's wrong with your system. They brute force in there to do whatever things, a type of uh, you know, type of hacking in there just to get in there. So, hey, you need to up your, you know, your system, or else you're gonna have leaks. Or um, yeah. Stores too, so lots of yeah. Engines. That's that's what. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's what it is there for. I mean, yeah, there is a good hacker out there. You have to know how to hack to in order to beat beat a hacker. Then you know that's what I do. Yeah, and yeah. Because sadly, that those those aren't yeah. in the gaming industry. Yeah, uh, that's what they need more of, and yeah, that's the well, problem. Uh -huh. There are, but they're not yeah. as blessed. Yeah. Like, for example. Yeah, they're not. It's not only just prevalent, but they're not really talked about compared to the ones that do hack, like just like no, the black hat hackers that does it for ransom, does it trying to get that quick. But you guys, like the other ones, really like for example, uh, the ones that um, <clears throat> like the ones that pretty much you say you, like you. Well, I wouldn't say modders is on that line, but you have people that know the, when they did GTA Five and Unreal Engine Five. And no, and because apparently that was in the wasn't the makeup of GTA 5, but then they didn't want to put it in there. So there was people that actually was like, okay, we're going to do what we got to do to make that happen. And they did it to show, not to make money off of it, not to do any of that, just to show, hey, this is what you can do to make money. Or this is what your product looks like if it was like this, this. And that's when those people, they invite into their teams in order to once they help fix the game like there's even people that i think it's cyberpunk had some folks that you know i went cd project red got hacked that there were people but some of those uh those people were invited to help fix their system in the game and so because uh they was like yo y'all's uh, systems is the system's ass i need to fix that uh -huh. but uh as far as the hacking that you're talking about, Craze, yeah, you're right. That type of hacking, we do hear a lot more than the other hack uh, type of hackers, and those are the type of hackers that do, you know, do need to uh, pay because what they're doing yeah. is extortion, is, um, what's the name? Um, there's another th um, crime that goes with it, not espionage. It's, a, it's, it's bribery. It's yeah, bribery too yeah bribery yeah, is uh, right. but that goes with like extortion and you no know, so they do need to pay for that yeah. ne nevertheless they need to pay for it. yeah like i i i know what i know where fandom is coming from where it's like you know like there is like the good hackers in that area but like what what this kid was doing it was definitely not a good hacking it was yeah yeah of course of course just like like hell not like, like like, I understand, like, if, if, like, if a company, like, a special, co like, if the company itself says, like, okay, so hack our game, tell us what's wrong with it. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, yeah, that, that's a good hacker because that also mm -hmm. brings up in the idea of also Q&A. So. Right. So. Right. And, yeah. oh, keep going, I'm sorry. Yeah, but, yeah, what this kid did with just the explosion, like, even if you're, even if you're just intentionally just doing it on purpose just to, just to hack. I, I don't I like like no I, I I I like like if you're not hired by a company to help them out in any type of way, then no, it's still wrong. Like it's still like it's still not your job to go ahead and hack the game, to go ahead and just like tell them, oh no, you messed it up. No, unless they hired you and doing so, and you have the actual credentials to do so. No, I don't I don't feel like that's that's right either. Like and then like in that area. That, that, no, that's a 16 year old kid just yeah. doing. I mean, he didn't just go after the game industry. He went after freaking Uber, man. So he yeah. did yeah, Uber, and then like yeah, yeah. Now like, he, he, oh sorry, he was trying to make some money. That's all he was trying to do. Like 
it was, it was horrible. But you know, when it comes to like hacking and stuff, uh, uh, you know, that's the problem with the game industry. I mean, look how many leaks there's always are when they announce a new game. Like, how many times have we said, "Oh, there's a leak for this game now"? Like, the fighting game industry is like one of the biggest things that you know, you know leaks. Like, look what happened with Street Fighter Six. Yeah. Now yeah. all the characters leak. Yeah. Well, no. Yeah. Well, not only just Street Fighter, but Capcom itself got leaked. That's how we know about Resident Evil Co. Veronica Outbreak mm -hmm. and all the Resident Evil games that's being remaked as we speak. Uh, mm -hmm. That Dragon Dogma is getting a sequel. How um, legit there's talks about Lost Planet. And then there was something to do with Anamusha, possibly. And like all these... Uh, what's name? Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and possibly 4. Um, that, that's how we know about that. And it, it's just getting as prevalent as the Marvel leaks. Like, it, like we starting to get so many leaks about Marvel with that. Like, as soon as they drop a, a, a trailer or they say, yo, Captain America Part 4, all of a sudden, boom, the whole script is on, on the internet. You're like, wait, what? Yeah. Or a special, or the trailer that was supposed to have been set for D23, or it was supposed to be set for a special uh, event, like the uh, the Ant Man three trailer that got leaked. Yeah, like and, like like for, like for like for instance, like in true honesty, like it's like I understand like the leaks for that, but like like unless it's like for like like a good nature, like like what Phantom describing, like for the job, yeah. like what they do and so, if they tend to clap back, a lot of people get pissed off about that. So it's like you can't really right. do it. You can't really do like be upset if you're leaking their stuff illegally and then you're clapping oh, back on that. It's like man, uh, they they get mad about. It. I mean, honestly, people are gonna get mad at anyway. Like yeah. you, like legit. If it's like if it's illegal and you like listen, you getting clapped back, uh, back in this what this offense or consequence. What you're gonna have people that's gonna say you know. Hey, like-minded people that say, you know, they got what they, they deserve. Other folks, they're not going to say that. You're always going to have some one side say yay and one side says uh, nay. Like, you can't satisfy the entire room. room. What, no matter what you do in life, or, uh, got what industry you're in, you can't satisfy everybody in the room. There's going to be that one person that's going to be like, I disagree. And... But that's that <laughs> yeah exactly because, like, you just do you just make sure that what you're doing is right and is just and just and that you're doing what you're supposed to do and just leave it at that you know what i mean yeah i just like like in my opinion i just like as i said i leave like with stuff like that like if like like if i'm doing like any leaks it should be from me like if I do a com company and I do like my game and stuff like that, any type of leaks or like like you know spoilers, it should be from me. If somebody tries to go ahead and be like, oh you know we just leaked, like a like a hacker went ahead and leaked the company, and yeah I'm gonna find out who the hacker is and then I'm gonna get him arrested. It's like I I never asked you to leak my my shit. Like like no like that's my shit to leak. Like like it's, it's like stuff like that. But like as I say, if it goes to a point where if I'm gang a guy be like hey i want you to hack my game tell us what's wrong with it then yeah that's that's a different story but like as i said like with stuff like that personally like if somebody tries to hack my 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 thing to get leaks from that i'm gonna do what like borderlands did i'm gonna, I'm gonna tell them i'm gonna send a season desist or i'm gonna go ahead and literally bring them to court oh yeah you have every right to do so i mean that's your property that's yeah. your ip yeah exactly and then it's like it's like as I say, it just unless I'm telling, unless I'm hiring someone to hack my game. This, this, as I said, it's completely different. So yeah, I completely understand that, and and it just it's just like 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 a lot of people, especially like a lot of people, unless you're hiring them, a lot of people in the gaming industry hate that shit, and like like especially as I said, I mentioned the Borderlands Three issue. Like they just they had a detective go to the house to send them to cease and desist. Or and that or not, it led to an um, uh, actual lawsuit, and then the guy had to shut down his channel and everything. So that, that that's what majorly happened. Um, we're gonna get to this last topic here. Um, I I, I know I was gonna check out the um the PS5 price hike, but there wasn't really too much on that. Um, 
eventually that was one of the topics. It was just like apparently it was just like brought up because of inflation. Nothing too nothing too crazy about that. Um because you know a lot of things are going up due to freaking inflation anyway. Um But this is mainly talking about Overwatch. Um I don't know if you guys keep in like yep. Like keep, keep in touch with the Overwatch thing. I know me and Arch do. Um, so Overwatch Two gonna be coming out, I believe, on the fourth of the. Is it the fourth? Uh, that's the beta. Yeah, the, the beta comes out on the fourth. Okay, so <laughs> that's the beta. So, so technically, technically, it'll be out on the fourth. The beta is gonna be out, and then it comes out for. I guess I get I guess like it comes out like I I think later on like the full game but like when you get like these free free to play games they end up starting off with betas so it came out free to play it's, it's gonna be coming out free to play um there are brand new changes to it um of course there's instead of the six versus six there's five versus five now uh two DPS two healers one tank um Oh no no! It does come out on the fourth, but it's free to play on the day it comes out. Yes, it's free to play on the day it comes out. Now, here's the difference with it: they added things like a battle pass, which a lot of people are upset about. Um, so the battle pass is free for those who have it and or buy the um actual watch point um pack. Um, it comes with the brand new character named Kiriko. Um, and it comes with like skins like you know new weapon ornaments and stuff like that Which is a lot of people are upset at the fact that you have a character locked behind um a battle pass But the character is on The free side of the battle pass like you don't have to pay for the battle pass unlocker You know what I mean, um So with that She's a certain level um they changed that to her but if you I bought the watch point pack you already got her or if you had the game already prior you already got her um there's gonna be a new um junkenstein event where i believe it's like it's not it's like you have to complete the level and the main bad guy is gonna be sombra but this is what the main thing about the changes that are coming up with the battle pass so the battle pass you could pay for it to actually um to, to buy the battle pass or you can earn the in-game currency which is a thousand coins which is most likely a skin um if you also want to unlock a character apparently it's a thousand coins to unlock a character um that is new if you're brand new to the game um or you could even unlock it through progression which it actually had a list of progression like where the first character you can unlock is genji and you can unlock the rest through and through so they locked out the characters until you could progress in playing certain games with it um which i don't understand how that works um there's that the battle pass as i said could also be bought with in-game currency regular regular cash uh to go up like in 20 levels you pay like 2200 coins um which is which is not difficult to get um there's brand new there's a brand new skin there's mythic skins which at the end of the battle pass there is a cyber demon genji skin which actually could be edited um different colors uh different like ornaments like you can change the mask and any and everything with it um is a different way to progress now now how many of you played the original overwatch I think all of them have. now yeah yeah, so now instead of being level 25 to play um, competitive, you have to win 50 quick play games. Does my wait? Does my file from the first game uh, come through or no? Uh, yes, because that, that that's what the cross progression is. Um, oh, yeah. the cross progression comes through with that. Um, um, I think they still do that, even though because like with um. I, I believe it's with new new players, but um, I'm not really sure how that how that goes with the uh, players who have it. Um, with that, they have a different um, progression for the roles. Now, for five instead of um, five games, it's seven for each role that you have to win to get a certain um, rank in in those roles. Um, 
I think when you progress, it shows you the seven games that you played, the map, and the three main characters you played during that match. That's all. One ma major thing. Um, medals are completely gone. They made no sense anymore. Yeah, yeah, they, they, to a certain extent for me. Um, like, for me, like, I, I, like, I don't understand why I have a gold medal as a Zenyatta over a Reaper or a Soldier. It's not even that, it's like, what do you really get from medals besides discrimination and not even, nobody can else see your medal besides you and your friend or somebody really stopping your profile, I guess. I think it shows, I think it shows, like, where the roles have to, like, literally apply in. Um, like, for instance, like, as I said, like, a healing medal should go for supports. Like, like, I don't, like, I don't see, like, a reason of why, like, if I'm Zenyatta, where, or Lucio, or Mercy, I want to heal a character. But, then, Soldier somehow has more, uh, has gold healing over a Mercy, or Moira. It, that, that, that's what I, that's what I mean, where, where they, they stand out. Um, I think eliminations can go for anybody. Uh, damage should go for the damage area, and objective kills should go for the, um, for um either you know like for anybody and objective time should be mainly for tanks um that, that, that's where i think i think it goes but they completely got rid of it um there's eliminations assists and um in deaths there is um a list of where like you can see how much damage someone is doing um how much um healing someone is doing and how many minutes they have on a point now um, it also shows like your weapon accuracy, your direct hits, all, all that. The report system got just as strong as Call of Duty's. God. Now they are able to listen to your actual speech in in-game chat. I mean, PlayStation 5 already does that too, especially with the PlayStation Party transfer. Yeah, but now they're doing this because they're keeping like, you know, you know how like most accounts have SMS text? Yeah. Now they're possibly going to be able to do that to a point where they can ban you from your phone number. So now if you have, so now if you have that phone number and you're trying to make another account with that phone number, you can't go ahead and make another account. That, oh, look, I'm getting banned the first week. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how much I rage, uh... Oh, what? Yeah, I, I rage a lot. I, I try to be the nice person, but I have like 75, 76 videos of toxic um, players being assholes. As, as a Reaper main, I'm uh, I'm definitely getting banned the first week, so that's gonna be fun. Yeah. Um. There's that, and um, Kiriko, uh, like like well well first of all, what do you guys think about these um these changes first? Uh, they're alright, but I, I'm, I'm actually wanting to get into Kirito because I just seen like her gameplay mm. like yesterday mm. and I already said that she's broken and people are going to misuse her incredibly. Okay, um, let, let me let me ask a question. Who um who plays what in Overwatch? Like I know you said you were a Reaper me. I'm a I'm a Reaper and a Somber me. Um Jack, who do you play on Overwatch? A uh, mix of everybody, but mainly I just play the healers. So you'll mainly see me as Lucio, Moira, and uh, Mercy. Okay. Um. What about um? Okay, so like um, Phantom, have you played Overwatch? Oh, uh, I'm a junk rat. Okay, no problem. Um, what about you, Zet? Have you played Overwatch? Haven't played in a while, but it was mainly a Zenyatta main. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. So here's what's happening right now. Um, before I get into Kirito, th there's a passive now for the DPS area. Um, now when you get a kill, your speed—I think your reload speed is double is um, boosted. So. That's that's what happens when you get a kill on DPS area. They have a passive now where your reload speed is faster. Um, but there's that. Um, now for every character, when you switch, 
with um when you switch your character let's say if you have your alt already and you have to switch that next character that you play gets 30 percent on his ultimate so it starts off with 30 percent when you switch um that's good because that's something that really bothered me back when uh when i first started playing yeah it's like it's like a lot of the um ults ult charges were very slow in my opinion they were really really slow um so here's here's what um arch was talking about kiriko okay so kiriko's backstory is that she was actually um her mother trained her genji and um hanzo in the way of the sword she um she carries the spirit of a fox and her abilities are really really strong really strong um she is a mixture of i would say like zenyatta baptiste and also genji so if i can go to her abilities right now and a bit of hanzo obviously yes and a bit of hanzo i agree with that yes um, um Especially with that ult. yeah exactly exactly um so her voice is by sally amaki First of all, um, um, who actually is, I believe, someone who is um, vo a good voice actor. Uh, Sally Amaki actually... No, she actually does a voice already. No, she... No, so it's Sally Amaki. She's the voice of Kiriko. She did... um. So I'm looking at other ones. Uh, Fate Grand Order. She did a child... Um, Kaguya Sama, Love is War. She plays Betsy, and she uh, she she's a she's a brand new actress, I guess. She's a side character. Yeah, it was she was side characters. This uh, is her first main role. Um, th th has anybody heard of Tomo Chan as a girl? No, I don't think so. Yeah, it's an anime. She was played as a character. Um, yeah, so like with that, she's brand new. Um, and her abilities are pretty crazy she still has that wall climb so she has that initial wall climb like um like uh hanzo and genji, hanzo and genji yes um let me go ahead and do something um she has like her regular um she has something called a, ha a healing ofuda which is like you know like the talismans and they could be thrown to heal and they, like you could throw them at um at like anybody that's aiming for it to heal um when it turns yellow that means it's seeking for an ally and when it turns blue they don't it doesn't have a target can, can i skip ahead crazy and, and just mention one of the most broken fucking abilities of her i hated oh oh trust me i'm i i will get there i know i know i know you want to talk about it i'm talking about the alt or her regular ability one of her regular abilities okay let me the, 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 let's just say the jump one for now okay let me let, let me go let me go straight to that the swift step are you talking about the swift step yes yes i am i fucking hate that one okay so first of all she, sec, before that she has a kunai which is a second ability if it gets like multiple critical shots it does more damage but she's very hard to aim at the swift step so the swift step can be used on any character just say what it does okay okay what she does is literally just teleports to the next character that she's aimed at she can jump through walls no matter how far uh, her teammate is to teleport, teleport. yeah so she's like freaking hit of a dragon ball super pr pr pretty much but I don't think that's the broken ability. I think the broken ability here is the protection Zuzu. That's a, one of them. But no, the swift step with the protection uh, Zuzu are broken. Yeah. Okay, so the protection Zuzu is... It's something that b grants immortality and, and literally stops negative effects. So, for instance, if Junkrat's wheel is going towards a team i could throw the protection zuzu before it hits and then it won't kill the team it will do damage to them it would it, like it will protect them from the from that what that tire it basically causes no damage but it only lasts like what two seconds two seconds yeah if 
three people are earth shattered by Reinhardt, I could throw it to that group of people and they won't be shattered and stunned anymore. Or if anything, like if they're put to sleep by Anna Sleep Dart, boom, protect Jinzuzu, boom, everybody's awake now. It, it, it counters Anna's Grenade, her Sleep Dart, Ash's Dynamite, uh, Junker Queen's Rampage, which is bleeding, um, Maze Blizzard, um, Reinhardt's Earth Shatter, and Sombra's Hack. It's basically your one and all, like, oh, everybody in the, uh, on the enemy team about to run in and cast ult. You can just cast this one uh, ability and it really does nothing. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you guys think so far about this character? And, the, and by the way, and by, wait, by the way, by the way, that protection Zuzu is a normal ability, and it uh, the cooldown is only like what ten to fifteen seconds. Yeah, it's 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 like the same thing for the um the immortality field. She's gonna get reworked slash nerfs day one. Yeah, yeah. I I don't think she's gonna get reworked because of that. I think it's because of the alt. That's why. I think. What does the alt do? I didn't see it do anything. All right, the Kitsune Rush is literally a straightforward path. It's where the the actual fox thing goes. So what it does, it literally does things like it boosts and accelerates the movement, attack speed, and cooldowns of each character within that area. So let's say for instance, um, let's say if I'm playing Baptiste, right? Um, and I I have my abilities like the healing and everything. I will move faster with Baptiste, be able to attack faster with Baptiste, and my cooldowns will be shorter because of her, her ultimate, if I'm in that range. It basically just resets all cooldowns. Pretty much. It's a sick it's a 60% cooldown reduction. And it lasts for 10 seconds. The fire rate goes up by 25% and your speed goes up by 50%. Sounds interesting. It's something that I'm, I'm gonna have to see in game before I really say anything. Yeah. Um. Anything of like basic abilities, like like you know, like you know, like things like basic like projectiles work. Um. It doesn't work with um, returns or retire. That doesn't work at all. Um. Uh. Maze wall fucks it up badly. Um. Um, sad part is, um, the Biotic Orb from Moira gets a, um, cooldown benefit, but the Immortality Field from Baptiste doesn't, which is bullshit. Um, things like, um, from Zarya, her Particle Barrier, her Projected Barrier, and the Sentries for Symmetra don't get benefits. Um, like, like, literal, literal basic projectiles and basic, um, primary attacks. And she is a damage fun considering she does have uh, 200 health, yeah. which is just like 50 above Baby Diva. Mm -hmm. But she has the more uh, the mercy ability where if she stays out of combat. She automatically heals herself. Yeah, so it's it's like the only way to counter her is with either Sombra, um, Roadhog, to actually like one stop hit, one shot hit her, or Moira. Who literally is supposed to counter people like Genji and, ha and Hanzo? So that's the only way you can do do with that. That's the brand new character, and she's gonna be unlockable at level 55 on the battle pass, and which is the free side. And with that, she's also going to um. She's a support character. Straight, straight up brand new support character, which the lineup is going to be more supports. And, like, the new characters for this first... Because uh, they had, like, a whole entire um, roadmap for it. The first part of the roadmap is just new supports and tanks. Uh, no DPS. Which is interesting. <clears throat> yeah. And, um... They, they, she's probably going to be one of the, big, the biggest played supports. I know for a fact that she, the support, because of her character, the support's going to be seeing more, more plays. Because with the beta, to play tank in DPS, it was 10 minutes of a wait. 
With support, it was two. So, wh what do you guys think about like all these new changes? Especially if you have a, uh, a really good play. I'm thinking as a Reaper main, because my, my job as a Reaper main is to sneak behind and get killed from behind. Mm -hmm. That's what his shadow step is for. But uh, if she sees me killing somebody, she can just teleport straight through the wall, because there's no range. She doesn't have to see where she's teleporting. She, uh, she can just aim at one of her teammates that's wounded and teleport across the map. Actually, so, actually, I think there is a range. No, it's a max range. 30 meters. 30 meters. 30, 30 meters? In 30 meters. It's a 7 second cooldown. But how, but how long, uh, but how big is the map? That's the thing. It's some of the same maps from Overwatch, and it depends on which map you're on, and some of the new ones. Um, I'm not sure a lot, of those, a lot of those, uh, those maps from Overwatch 1 are just a lot of big corners. That's all they are. Yeah, I don't know. All I know is that, um, it's, it's only 30 meters. Um, like, a lot of them were, like, past, so Overwatch, um, map size. Like, like, it goes to a point where it's, like, it's like where are these ma what sizes are these maps though all right so let me see um okay so let me see if i can like find an idea of how big the map is um because i'm trying to see like through meters um and like how big it is through meters um I think that would be like, like, you know how you're playing on Hanamura, you're right there at the gate and then everybody's trying to keep you from going past the gate and then you have to go straight into the bell yeah. to capture the point. Like from that gate to that bell, that's, that, that's how far it is. It's still pretty good distance. That, that, that is a pretty big distance, I'm not in trying to honesty, but I'm not 100% sure. That, that. that's, that's almost half the map. That, that's mm. half the map of Hanamura. Yeah, that is true. That is true. But, um... Especially since there's only, like, two choke points, and that's, uh, we've got the gate and the actual door. Yeah. That is true. Let's just, let's just hope, like, because as I said, like, there's, there's major changes that, that come from it. So you have to see you have to see how that goes. If most likely they might have to do changes. <laughs> and if they do change if either to her or they're gonna be increasing people. Who knows? Like Well, there's a lot of new there's a lot of people that just have to bring in as well. Um, especially from the Overwatch story. Especially I would love to see them bring in Hanzo and Gizzy's father, which is the leader of the Shimada clan. Yeah. Who is technically still alive in the universe. Yeah, they can definitely do something like that. They could also bring in, um, apparently the Farah had a sister. She does. Yeah, so that, that could be a thing. Um, they're trying to get the, um, the guy who probably runs Talon, Maximilian, to possibly do that. Yeah, so. I don't know what his abilities would be, but fuck it. Yeah, there's a. Her name is Sam Amari. Yeah. yeah, there's that. Um, who who knows? Like, there's like a whole bunch of changes that could go with it. But, um, it's not just that they. But here's one major reason why they brought the battle pass, and this is why I want you guys' opinion on it. They brought the battle pass and made the characters unlockable to stop things like one. Um. Like, you know, doing things like when they're like going up certain levels and you can unlock certain characters. They want people to get a feel for all characters to actually see which who they want to main. And two, they want to try to stop one tricks. So like one trick, um, one trick players, like from actually one, playing one, one role, one character. They're trying to get people to go ahead and be productive to a point where they actually know more than one role. Yeah, but they've always been trying to do that, and it always fails because everybody's so you know, used to their one role. That's what this game is. You know what role you're good at. Yeah, like, like I, I, that's exactly what I mean. It's like you might know one role where you're good at, but this game cries cries for people to learn more than that because 
with some people like sometimes they don't like being a flex player in my opinion is way better than knowing one role so that's what they're trying to do now um so like i'm assuming that's what they're going for i hope that it works out properly but one thing that i don't understand that i'm still trying to figure out is how is that gonna go ahead and benefit like how does that make the game better does it make it the fact that oh like now people it really wouldn't make no difference because if you had the original game you can actually still play all the characters that were there yeah and that's another thing too like the people who bought the first game is gonna have so much of a lead on anybody who's just getting into overwatch now yeah so i'm, I'm guess that's why that's a major thing so what, what do you guys think about that Uh, it's their way of probably getting people to buy the original game. It's a tactic to do because that's the if they're saying that you can if you have the original game you can play everybody from jump, but if you have part two, just part two, you have to start from scratch trying to play each and every character or, or unlock every other character. Then it's gonna force people to want to buy part one and up the sales of part one just so they can have that edge they won't feel like they won't have that edge when part two drops honestly what well, if they want to really like it's a not it's a unique strategy money strategy but if they wanted to be you know really fair just make it whether you have part one or not uh start from zero but i know a lot of people in the community is not gonna want that want that word they're like nah nah i want all my stuff from part one to be on there why do i gotta start from zero even though i mean it would make sense but then not a lot of people is gonna want to do that yeah because I'm, I'm i'm seeing like on the forums that a lot of people are on the like they're literally on the um the fence with both both of them so it's like it's like they, they literally split the community on what the decision is so i just i have to see what it is Cause I know like that's gonna be a thing. Um, I'm gonna be playing that like competitively. I'm gonna be playing Gundam Evolution competitively when it comes out in November. Um, which is like the Gundam version of Overwatch, which I played on PC and it's really good. Uh, it's a fun effect. It is. It really is. It really, really is. And I think that 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 can actually work pretty well. If you don't like anything of Overwatch, you don't want to support Blizzard based on what they did. Um, I, that that's one of the games you would go for. But um. But yeah, so like, do you guys have anything like final to say like before we close this out? Like, anything you guys, you guys want to say like about any of the topics or anything like that? Nah, uh, pretty much uh, good conversation from everybody. Learned a lot, from, uh, a lot especially from Overwatch Two because I haven't been uh, haven't been paying attention towards it. So y'all talking about different characters, the lore. Uh, lore about stuff that I didn't even know about like Hanzo and Genji's father uh, being who he is and what he can do if he's ever introduced in the game uh, makes me actually excited for what they're going to do for uh, the future of Overwatch and along with uh, the conversations with <clears throat> Grand Theft Auto 6 and remasters and remakes some re uh, games that I didn't even that I'd be like wow I forgot to you know I can't believe I forgot that or wow I don't even know about that and you know now you put me on to a game that I want to actually check out and be like okay now I wonder why so and so wanted a remaster so and so wanted a remake of this mm -hmm. so a lot of good conversations a lot of good feedback a lot of good vibes all around so great job to everybody yeah um i appreciate all all you guys for popping in thank you very much for doing another episode with me um i appreciate all you guys who, who came in and you know literally you know came in through the audience i like you know especially like people came in like mary and other people i appreciate you guys for like, you know contributing your opinions i appreciate it very much from you guys thank you it's no problem all right yeah so i'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know when we do another episode and uh and then we'll, we'll set up something because there's a lot more news that we got to talk about. But we're going to close this um this whole entire thing off. So I'm going to um, get off the Discord. 
um jack i need you to send me your twitch link and a, a permanent link for your discord uh, uh, did you want to say something? I got you with that. I got you with both. There is something though, like, uh, like me and Drag have been talking about this, uh, planning on setting up actual tournaments for anybody who, who is part of FGC. Yes. So, uh, it's going to be weekly tournaments for free and then monthly for, for you're going to, you know, actually get a payment on that. I want to set up to the point where there's actually a cash prize on that. So we're trying Ooh. to build up to uh, the community. Oh. In FGC, yeah, especially, you know, no matter where you're from, we're mostly wanting to do it like for Texas and Oklahoma because we really don't have that much of a spotlight, but it doesn't matter where you come from, we will we'll accept anybody. Oh, uh, well, um, well, that's the same thing with me. I'm probably going to be doing um, tournaments with um, Overwatch um, when Gundam comes out, probably Pokemon Unite. So, uh, I'm down, uh, down for that. The Overwatch one, you know, I'll, I'll yeah, um, Share it's. My it's definitely going to be ones that are very high end because I'm I'm trying to go back to school where that school actually has an esports center. So I'm trying to work with that to see if I could possibly set up stuff for that. So we're going to see how far we can do for that. But definitely, um, with that link, as I said, like if you want to go ahead and probably join in for any of the tournaments for the FGC, uh, especially for um the Immortals, definitely join the Immortals on their Discord channel and definitely go ahead and show your support to the Immortals and definitely follow um. Uh, Prince Drac, does it does it go by Prince Drac? Prince Dracula? Uh, it's uh, King Dracula 405 now. Um, if you want to follow me on any of my socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, uh, TikTok all of that, uh, look for King Dracula 405. It's the same for all of those. Okay, cool. So it's just just send me the links for those. Um, does anybody have any links that they want to share, like like share or anything? Uh, sorry, nope. nah, nah, once I get this set up and stuff, then, then I'll start sharing it. But nah, it's a moment. Ah, uh, I got my laptop and I got and I set my DC for already. Uh, okay, no problem. We get we get that. We go ahead and get that ready. But um, yeah. But thank you guys. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it very much for popping in. Um, as I said, I'm gonna get off the channel right now. I appreciate you guys very much for popping in for this episode. I'll let you know when we come out with a new episode, and um, when this video comes out, I'm definitely gonna share it with uh, Drax so he can share it on the Discord channel. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thank you guys. I very I appreciate it very much, and you guys have a good night. All right. All right, guys. That was um another podcast episode with the Immortals. You know, we're going to get the links for their Discord channel. By all means, show your support by joining the Discord channel. You know, show, go ahead and join a nice Discord with amazing people, cool people that you can hang out with. Definitely show your support to um to King Dracula or Papa Drac. And definitely, you know, follow him on all his um handles, on all his social media. And definitely show your support to that. But also definitely subscribe to the EHG community. Definitely turn your notifications for when we get new streams and new videos set out. Definitely join us on our Facebook group, our Discord channel, and make sure to go ahead and check out our merchandise and follow us on Glimish. And as um, Phantom said that they're going to be doing FGC tournaments, so by all means join their Discord as well. And we might end up starting doing our tournaments as well. But this is Nico from the EHG community. And I want to say thank you very much to our special guests, the Immortals from the Immortals Discord. And thank you guys very much for, for popping in with us. And remember that there's always something amazing on the horizon. Thank you very much.